comrade Kim Jong-il spent a lifetime dedicated to the cause of socialism and communism. His exploits as a leader and commander, as well as a theoretician, is unparalleled. Since his early days to his very last, he was thrust onto the front line of politics and revolution in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Under his leadership as General Secretary of the Workers' Party and Chairman of the National Defence Commission, he had to guide the revolution through its most challenging period, the arduous march. Despite all of his works, Kim Jong-il is remembered in the West as the man with the taste for cognac who shot... Good morning, Sean. Welcome in, comrade. ...and invented the hamburger. Is there any veracity to these claims? According to a great deal of articles by Western media outlets, these outlandish ideas come from Kim Jong-il's official state-approved biography. As such, the following information presented in this video is from the condensed biography of Kim Jong-il, as approved by the DPRK. I highly recommend that you yourself read it, not only to gain a deep, deeper insight into the life and times of Kim Jong-il, but to also dispel such outlandish myths like the ones previously mentioned. It must be further noted that the following video is not a complete account of the life of Kim Jong-il. It should be considered a general overview. A great number of volumes have been published detailing his life, including the condensed single-volume biography. A lot of information has naturally been omitted for the sake of providing the viewer with a succinct and clear overview. For more information, you can find a link to the full biography in the description. Without further ado, I present to you a short biography of the life and times of comrade Kim Jong-il. Enjoy. Kim Jong-il was born on February the 16th, 1942, in Ryangang Province, Korea. His father, Comrade Kim Il-sung, and mother, Kim, Kim Yong-suk, had been ardently anti-Japanese fighters since their own early years. In the 1940s, of course, were the years of the Second World War. The Hitlerite Nazis were marching all over Europe, and Japanese Emperor Hirohito was trying to bring all of the Pacific under his control. The anti-Japanese guerrillas had been fighting valiantly against the armies of the emperor. It was in these times that Kim Jong-il was born, on the dawn of the Korean Revolution and amongst the ruins of the old feudal society. One account from 1946 tells the story of Kim Jong-il's great-grandfather presenting him with a writing brush. Quote, your grandfather wrote Aim High, and your father, quote, Liberation of Korea. What will you write? Kim Jong-il, taking the brush, wrote, Long live General Kim Il-sung. Despite being the son of the liberator of Korea, he in fact did not receive any special treatment in his upbringing and education. He attended school with books wrapped in paper and simple clothes, just like any other student. Despite his extreme young age at the time, Kim Jong-il nonetheless was constantly exposed to the building of a new career. His early life was never away from politics, and one could indeed conclude that it was thanks to this early exposure which led Kim Jong-il down the path of a revolutionary and politician. The Fatherland Liberation War cast a dark shadow once again over the Korean Peninsula, which still to this day hasn't quite been lifted. The war machine was sprung to life again, however, the DPRK was faced with a new enemy, the United States of America. 
With the outbreak of the war in 1950, Kim Jong-il, who up to then had only experienced fully the building of a new society, now had to face the horrors of war. An eight-year-old child receiving a first-hand view of pain and suffering. For the first two years of the war, Kim Jong-il was separated from his father. However, in 1952, the two were reunited. For the rest of the war, he stayed with Kim Il-sung at the headquarters of the Korean People's Army and witnessed his lengthy sessions of planning and developing military strategies and tactics. It can be clearly concluded that Kim Jong-il was a product of his environment at that time. His exposure to politics, war and military tactics at such a young age, in my opinion, cemented his life's journey. One could almost say that it was his destiny to become a politician and to work for the revolution. In 1954, Kim Jong-il entered Pyongyang Middle School No. 1 at the age of 12. It was during this time that Kim Jong-il's taste for reading really began to shine. He reportedly read a great number of books in his teenage years, including sociopolitical theory and culture. By the late 1950s, he was heavily involved in the Children's Union, and in 1957, he was elected to the position of Vice Chairman of the Democratic Youth League. In 1960, Kim Jong-il entered Kim Il-sung University to study a course in economics. On his first day, he climbed Ryongnam Hill, where the university was located, and recited the following poem, which he had written. Quote, As I stand on Ryongnam Hill at sunrise... The land of three thousand ri greets my eyes. Learning the leader's great idea, I will be the master of revolution in this land, Korea. O Korea, I will add glory to thee. On the road of Juche, I will be firm and steady, under the guidance of the great leader. Braving the raging waves and storms, I will lead Korea into the future. O Korea, I will make thee famous. I will go on forever with the cause of the sun that shines all over the whole world. I will bring about the era of communism when the red glow of Juche will cover the earth. O Korea, my Korea. During his studies at Kim Il-sung University, Kim Jong-il was very attentive to his studies. He was noted to have gone beyond the syllabus of his course. For example... In one examination regarding the history of the international labour movement, he discussed in depth, as explained in the syllabus, the disintegration of the Second International. However, he did not limit himself to just explaining certain reasons, but actually further gave his own opinions regarding the revision of Marx and Engels' ideals by revisionists such as Bernstein. Furthermore, Kim Jong-il put a lot of effort into developing the ideological understanding of his fellow students. He was very active in regards to the class education of them in particular, helping to develop their working class consciousness. Also, it was around this time that reactionaries such as Khrushchev were screaming about personality cults. While he trampled all over the memory and works of J.V. Stalin, Kim Jong-il denounced this trend during talks with his fellow classmates, pointing out that the leader is not just an individual, but a significant point of unity for the working class. In 1961, at the age of 19, Kim Jong-il became a member of the Workers' Party of Korea. Since his first day in the party, he was devoted as ever before in helping develop the ideological unity of the party members. In 1963, an article titled A Communist Student Collective of Our Times was published in Minju Chongyong, detailing the excellent comradely unity of Kim Jong-il's class. Also, around this time, Kim Jong-il wrote a number of essays discussing imperialism, revisionism and the place of philosophy in the world and naturally drew heavily from the works 
of Marx, Engels and Lenin, as well as Kim Il-sung. Also, Kim Jong-il began accompanying Kim Il-sung on field guidance trips to farms, factories and enterprises all over Korea in order to learn in depth the practicalities of building an economic, cultural and military power. In 1964, Kim Jong-il was posted to the position as a member of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea. In his work, he saw to it that all the departments and organisations of the party were thoroughly educated in the theories of Kim Il-sung and worked to mould the party into the party of the Juche idea. Kim Jong-il also began to take a deep interest in the military of the DPRK. He considered it an important task to turn the entire country into an impenetrable fortress. To do this, he expressed the importance of arming the entire people and, in effect, making Korea a guerrilla base. It was also of great importance for him to defend the nation from surprise attacks. He pointed out historical examples of when even great military powers were toppled by such attacks. In regards to arming the people, he noted the examples during the anti-Japanese revolution of the entire people of guerrilla zones turning out to fight the imperialists, not just the guerrilla army. The unity of the people and army is what allowed for, des for decisive victories against the imperialists, even when they were outmatched, outflanked and outgunned. Because of these efforts, the people and the Korean People's Army were able to respond efficiently and rapidly in 1968 during the capture of the US warship El Pueblo and the shooting down of the spy plane EC-121 in 1969. It was also in the mid to late 1960s that Kim Jong-il began to conduct visits with the leader to other countries. Also, he considered the development of art, music and literature onto a new and revolutionary level as an important task. Developing these areas to better reflect the contemporary thoughts and passions of the working people was of significant importance to him and as such he worked to provide guidance in their development. In 1971 he saw to it that the development of new revolutionary sites showcasing the feats of comrade Kim Il-sung's long career and the history of the Korean Revolution. Several revolutionary museums were opened and a number of bronze statues were erected of Kim Il-sung in order to immortalise him in the land in which he guided its liberation. In 1973, he began an upsurge in automisation of heavy industry, narrowing of the difference between light and heavy labour and industrial and agricultural work as well as eliminating the reactionary gender-based outlook of women's roles within the home. These ideals went on to be immortalised as part of the ongoing technological revolution of automisation, mechanisation and all-round scientific advances in the methods of commodity production. Part 2 for our intro.
First, I think it's time to run the channel intro now. Hope you all are well today. See lots of comrades coming in. I assume everybody is super excited for Comrade Kim Goes Flying, the movie. I know I am. Waiting on hold for my turn to call into C SPAN and they hung up. The whole first segment's about veterans calling in being dumb reactionaries and angry about getting trans people in the army. Well, that f sucks they hung up on you, bop. Sorry to hear that. I wish you could have got through. <laughs> if you're a transphobe, you're on the wrong channel, by the way. Good morning, everyone. It's me, Sleeping Larry, chairman of the Juche Gang. Welcome, welcome to uh, to my channel, where the people are our god. Vlad says I've got perspective because I'm gay and I was in the army right before they repealed DADT. And then enlisted four years later. Big surprise, there's still gay and trans people dragging their asses out of fires that imperialists send them to make. That was going to be my rant. Like 12 fucking vets calling in and mad about everything except the people that sent them to do the things they're traumatized about, right? So as you know, we always, of course, start with our morning cartoons on this channel. Of course, you can also, socials should pop up here anytime. Highly recommend you follow those as well. Because I don't just have your, your re regular run-of-the-mill socials, but we have Comrade Stalin, Socialist Schoolhouse, filled with fantastic articles. And videos that have even been removed from uh, YouTube. There's a great little library here of like Lenin speeches, Stalin speeches, even some Perenni talks that you might not find on YouTube anymore. Get the same deal right here for DPRK stuff. Again, just like a little library of videos that you might not find on YouTube anymore because they were taken down, etc. And then this is sort of the more meme page. 
the Juche Gang page itself. And I gotta add this one still to the I gotta add this one to the socials list. This is my other one. The my actual just like regular ass meme page. There might be some good memes on there, you never know. <laughs> I like that. I like this one. I'm ordinary and sick enough for the level of bad judgment I need to personally call in. I'm not normally up for C-SPAN, but I caught it this morning from the beginning. Thought about trying to call in more than once. Never called in to C-SPAN. Oh, we love to meme it out. Yeah. That's what, so I'm going to add, I am going to add this to, I'm, I'm assuming you all saw this picture before. I'm going to add this to the socials list. And then of course, if you're not familiar, I also do a little bit of work over here with Iskra Books. Another page that I would highly recommend you follow if you don't already. Because there's fantastic reads here that you can get uh, in physical form or you can have free PDFs of all any work that we publish. I just read this one not long ago and it's really good. Very much a recommended read. All right, well, before we get too much more into the weeds, let us watch our morning cartoons, comrades. And then we'll get to Comrade Kim Goes Flying, or feature presentation. Enemies are planning to destroy the monitoring station at Cherry Valley. Oh yeah, the docks. あんこ육전대장문안드립니다안병원원장이어떻게여기대장각하가특별대장님을데려오라고해서무슨일이생겼는가말부마십시오각하는폐존소식을 듣자 빨리 철갑상어를 찾으라 빨리 저 철갑상어가 무슨 약이 아닐까요? 내진탕 후유증의 상어가 약이라는 건 처음 듣는 소리다 아이고 이러다 대장도 사체실로 엄기할까 아? 보다 쉿 무슨 소리 <웃음> 
여기가 어디야? 아니, 우리가 어떻게 쪽집이 병실에서 잤을까요? 예? 예? 음? 여기 사체실이다! 아, 원장, 부상병들이 많은가? 예. 그리고 작은 놈이다! 아이고, 싸움에서 살아남은 놈이 몇이 안 되니 별게 없는데 참, 시체 속에 군복을 입지 않은 따쥐 수달 토끼가 끼어 있지 않겠습니까? 그놈들이 어디 있어? 어? 예, 예, 사체실에... 그러니 죽었단 말이지. 그놈들이 이제야 제갈 대로 갔군. <웃음> Serves them right. 그놈을 망쳐놓은 아주 나쁜 놈들이다. 예, 예. 이따위 성당들을 당장 불태워서 없애치라. 예, 예. 야, 특별 보좌관 놈이 간다. 하만 간다. 특별 보좌관이 성당들을 아예 불태워 없애버리라 그랬다면서요? 글쎄 말이요. 거센 게 나게 됐어. 어? 이게 왜 이래요? 죽은 놈들이 없어지다니. 가까, 그, 그, 큰일 났습니다. 사체실에 있던 놈들이 없어졌습니다. 그런 쪽집이 이놈들이 살아 있었구나. 하지만 뛰야 비오르기다. 당장 수색대를 불러 그놈들을 잡아내라. 예예. 예. 예. 빨리 당장을 찾아갑시다요. 닥쳐. 숱한 쪽집이들을 죽인 우리를 대장이 표창할 것 같은가? 이쪽구나. 치약을 속을 내가 성금보다 더 잘한다. 내 잡아보겠다고? 그렇지. 여기가 특별히 문실이다. 들어라. 이 문실에도 없습니다. 가까. 치약을 속에 아무것도 없습니다. 그놈들을 계속 찾아라. 네네. 아, 어서. 원장, 이 방엔 다른 이상이 없는가? 예예. 여기가 어디라고 감히? 아, 철갑상어, 빨리 꽃동산을 공격하라. 공격! 내가 이 꼬리니 차네가 부대를 돌봐야겠네. 알겠나? 예. 음, 마음 놓겠네. 원장, 가카를 빨리 완쾌시켜야겠어. 예, 예. 안 누구의 명령이라고 그렇게 하겠습니다. <웃음> <웃음> 이게 무슨 꼬리인가? 꽃동산 정찰벽이 족제비 부대를 취하다니. 특별 보좌관 이놈. 내 기고 있는 네 놈의 목줄을 모아서 끊어놓고야 말 테다. 그러자면 전 늑다리 대장부터 제껴야 특별 보좌관 놈을 잡아 치울 수 있다. I can always do that. 많고 많고 육전들을 이용해서 Be like this. 모조리 철갑상으로 꽃동산을 공격한다? 이것은 분명 쪽제비 대장님이 깊숙이 감춰 놓았던 무서운 독이빨이 틀림없다. 대장님이 병원에 있는 기회 이것부터 빨리 알아내야 한다. 그렇지. 나쁜 놈들이 도망을 쳤다. 내가 처방을 출동시켜 그것들을 잡아내라. 여기 본부는 내가 직접 구색하겠다. 시끄럽게 전하야 이거. 아나 육전 대장이다. 뭐? 육전대를 수색에 또 출동시키라? 이 수색 대놈들은 뭘 하는가? 고까지 건면놈못 잡아서 단잠을 깨. 많고 겁나하게 없다. 어떤 놈이야? 그카를 보면 알수 있다. 날 돌산 대장과 무슨 맹약을 했지? 그럼 그때 함께 손을 잡았던 다. 그래 어쩌라는 거요? 빨리 육전대를 수색에 출동시켜 대장을 상체를 잡아보라. 뭐 뭐요? 그래야 고통산 정찰병을 잡고 네가 대장이 될수 있다. 예? This weasel looks different in a funny kind of way. Doesn't it? <laughs> and we don't like weasels, but that, that's a weasel you might have a beer with. Oh, 
지역에 있는 병원에 기어들었다. 내장 카카가 위험하다. 빨리 병원을 수색하여 나쁜 놈들을 잡아내라. 나쁜 놈들을 잡아내라. 무슨 일인가? 에? 우린 대장을 해치려는 오똥산 놈들을 잡아내자고 왔어. 뭐, 뭐, 뭐라고? 야, 시간이 없다. 아, 그, 그, 그건 안 돼. 서동을 피우지 말고 조용히 물러가라. 에이, 나쁜 <웃음> 놈. <웃음> yeah, in reality, in reality, weasels are cute. 빨리. We have a stoat that lit that we saw one day. That thing was like an even cuter version of a weasel. Yeah, stoats are cool. They look so cute. They kind of worried me because they were near the duck run, but I think our ducks are pretty big, thankfully. I know that they can get bigger animals, though. <laughs> A wombat that followed me and my brother around the Sydney Zoo? That is adorable. I just love that there's a predator out there with weaponized dance moves and graffiti. He named the Wombat Tank. That's awesome. Reminds me of that, that one picture that the doctor's image with Stalin holding the Wombat. I love that picture. Yeah, same here, Buff. My wife always calls me like the kitty whisperer. Because any kitty that comes around like is all over me. After that, I went to the butterfly sanctuary and some random rare butterfly landed on the cuff of your sleeve and started laying eggs. A bunch of biologists rushed me to the lab to collect them. That, that is fucking epic. That is one eventful trip to the zoo, comrade. Parents had to lie about your age so you can go scuba diving. 
I tried snorkeling once when I was like 15 and I couldn't the very first time I tried to snorkel I couldn't keep the fucking water out of the mask for some reason. I figured it out years later. ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ、ハハハ
much of this stretch of the coast is like lucky to be 12 feet yeah it depends how close here it depends how close you are to like this the cities that are like probably where we are we're a little bit above sea level but not fucking much not not enough to not enough to really matter <laughs> Yeah, and it also flows a little bit different. I mean, like any other liquid. Yeah, not just not just ice caps and glaciers melting that's gonna raise sea levels. It's literally just basic thermodynamics. <laughs> we love the mute we're soon at the next animation style we're like a few episodes away at this point Good morning, Kanakami. Hope you were well today, comrade. Just in time for the movie. Dab him if you got him. I'm gonna do a dab too, buff. Cool down still going on the 420, so we'll allow it to smoke for another 10 minutes. That's, that's the rule. <laughs> Am I right, Kana? Thank you. Oh shit. Get over it. Looks like I have to get over it. Oh, damn. Gonna have a bowl out of dabs. The bowl's just as good. Really itching to have some hash again. I would have been friends with Stone. It's Friends of Stalin is close to 420. Have a 420 puff with Stalin. Hey, Comrade March of the Fire Ants. Welcome in. Hope you are well. You're just in time for our movie, which we're gonna start in just a second. Like cigars, I bet he'd smoke a blunt with a comrade, right? That's what I'm thinking. Little blunt. Don't have to put anything too potent in it, you know? You wanna, you don't wanna give him too harsh, uh, too harsh a strain from the 40s used to that leafy shit. Oh, 
I feel like we're gonna I feel like we're getting a cliffhanger hanging in here again. Like when you're getting near the end of the episode and you know there's not enough time to wrap up what's going on. Hold her outside the window. Weed was strong to you in the 80s? Need the oldest of old school weak stuff. Let me enjoy the process for a minute or two, yeah. The stuff around here now, like, has gotten real potent, I find. Just in the last little bit. I knew it. Knew it was gonna be a cliffhanger. Well, comrades, it looks like this weekend, the game that we play, at least for some of the weekend, has been decided. I, I, I gave the chat my comrades, the community, a challenge to get us to 100,000 labor vouchers by the end of the month. And if they did so, I would have to play this game for two hours. Why did I make this? This horrible hike up an impossible mountain. I could have made something you would have liked. A game that was empowering, that would save your progress and inch you steadily forward. Since success is delicious, that would have been wise. Instead, I must confess, this isn't nice. It tastes of bitterness. It's capricious. It sets setbacks for the ambitious. It lacks lenience. It's bracing, inhumane. But not everyone's the same. I created this game for a certain kind of person. To hurt them. And not only that... <laughs> Uh, as you know, we have crowd control on this channel if you join me for a weekend gaming session. So I'm going to see if I can also get crowd control running for it. So you'll want to also save your labor vouchers for this weekend. When we actually play this game for two hours, you'll also be able to use those labor vouchers to affect the game. And maybe it'll go longer. Who knows? We'll see how much fun we're having. All right. Why don't we get to, why don't we watch our movie now? And then after the movie, I'm thinking. That's when we'll talk about, we'll finish up by talking about, I got the Pyongyang Times here. And I've got some People's Voice articles I want to look at. So let's watch our movie and then we'll do those articles. Get your popcorn, comrades.
and me. Ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> this opening. Oh yeah, the mu you're gonna love the music in this pub. The whole the whole movie is wonderful, honestly. Yeah, いや、あの、本屋 <웃음> 아, <웃음> I give up. You were up. I'm already doing mill. Stones are told you to take a cock at hair. I want a talk for sorry. Oh, you sang soon. Honey, you mean to go in there. I can't keep you singing about Hazimar, which I'm poor as you do. Young young as okay, I'll just sit on poker. Maybe you comrades would prefer it like this, would you? Wait. 아, 그렇잖아도 교회 교회 하면서 허파의 바람이 잔뜩 차는데 그래서 한부야 단을 꽝꽝 캐야죠. 나할 생각이 없네. Better full screen. 아싸야, 여기 탈게. 평양에 1년 동안 가 있게 됐어요. 아버지가 승인했어. 엄마. 나하고 같이 가자. 아, 나도 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 같이 가자. 아, 나도
Oh, never be scared to ask on this channel, comrades. Remember, the people are my god. That's that's our motto over here. So, 어머니 그 자네가 영미야. 이리 와봐. 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 이리 와
이건 식당패야. 어? 어? <웃음> 자네 내가 늙었다고 우습게 보이나? 이야, 대부분 식당이다. 아, 식당에. 하하, 난 진노하고 음식하고 바꾸잖아. 자, 자, 이거 가져가라. 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 아, 표가 한 아, 있으면 또 벌써 들어갈게요. 아니 이자 들어간 쟤네가 오빠 한데 있다고 해서 자네가 오빠? 하, 아 이거 내가 진짜 오빠가 되는 거야? 아프자. 아, 내 아, 이거 문지기 시번에네 처음으로 하나를 놓쳤고. 네 카리스마. 그럼 우리 집 겸은 아주 작구나. 뭐가 더 줄까? 이야, 시안이구나. 이야. Yeah, it looks like that long hair c h i h u a h u a 어때? 시안이 비슷해? 드디어 또 지금 내 맘에 꼭 준다니까. 내 결혼 말안 했어도. 그건 내가 한 소리예요. 나도 결혼을 안 했으면 또 심장수 참가가 공정을 심하고 날아보는 건데. 아, 정신 나갔어? 그러다 떨어지면 저 안전구들이 당신 몸무게를 존경 안 해요. 프라브게인바헤드포스트롤즈앤드트레인프롬앤얼리에이스토리즈앤헤드페일앤컴파리즈앤드그롤즈앤나운이유에스트레인프롬앤스트레인프롬앤스트레인프롬앤스트레인프
잘가 우리 후에 다시 만날 때가 있겠지 응? Yeah, any sport. I had a friend that was training for the Olympics fencing and was the same story. And ex again, it, especially depending on the parents, right? ねえ、教会部を。ねえ、かすいすかよ。かすいそう。ねえ、教会部を不備損ましよみそ。ひまんちゃんに立ちゃんかすいこ。はんぼなそしんちょば。うん。なら지。 Is she gonna go from being a construction worker to an acrobat? And it seems to be, I mean, a lot of times it seems to be ones who are already well off, to be honest. I mean, they have a lot of times the means to. Push through kids in ways that people don't can, right? Well, so much for you not being able to have a name similar to Kim Jong Un. Tanwang? <laughs> 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 시험을 쳐볼 수 있습니까? 희망자는 나 쳐볼 수 있어. 고맙습니다. 꽤 당돌하구만. 몸매가 괜찮아 봬요. 힘 있어 보이고. 무슨 정보를 준비했어? Gonna do. 공중계를 하겠습니다. 공중계? 공중계라. 그래요. 손발 씨미야 배워기 전달 보자는 건데. 한번 시켜봅시다. 시험 기준이 높지만 그러다 뜻밖의 인재가 하나 맞다들겠는지 알겠어요? 아마 어디서 공중계를 좀 배운 모양이에요. 좋습니다. 경공전으로도 한번 해보. Here she goes, chat. <sighs> Gonna do it? They put the safety cables on, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense considering they don't know if she can even do it yet or not. This <laughs> He's going to show them wrong. Yeah, the hair flip. Oh, waiting for them. Oh, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go I 
I cannot stand heights. <laughs> you get automated for junkie buff. <laughs> I like that one. I have... It's like, it's, I guess, I don't know if I, I'd call it ableist, but it's drug, anti-drug use or something, I guess. I guess it could be ableist because people with addiction. That's a good point. I have a pin that someone sent me from DPRK. Mine has both Kim Jong Il and Kim Il Sung on it. By the way, people in DPRK wear the pins voluntarily. Like, you don't have to wear one at all if you don't want. Or you can choose whatever. There's like a bunch of different styles you can get. Someone that enjoys the adrenaline high is what I mean. I will jump up right off the cliff if someone has recently ascertained that there's no rocks and water underneath and then jump right out of the plane. Out of that plane when I went skydiving. Yeah, not me. <laughs> I used to be not that bad. I was working a spray farm at one time and they like craned up the hose for me. And when I tried to bring it inside, it like unraveled and almost pulled me off this high story balcony. Ever since then, I've been terrified of them. <웃음> 이 아, 담병심하고 있어요. 어. 다시 저런 데 신경을 썼다니 가만두지 않겠다. 어? 예. 
<laughs> oh my god, Bob. And he said go, when he said no. Yeah, I think in his case, uh, well, this is Pyongyang here. It was in case on earlier, powerful finger. Some people are clueless, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> Keep asking you if he was your dad. What the hell? <laughs> あ、ごんぼしるかみだ。俺がみんなにさ、気張りでやるから。まあさ。よ、よみだもん。俺まどんじ、へねるしそ。こっぷるがのいらん。おったごはじゃな。あ、いや、そんな。いや、中継さんが
가져 장비를 얼마 나눠왔는데. 참 전에 저기 있는 걸 봤어요. 네? 어, 어 잘했어. 저기 하는 건 어때요? stage it looks like <웃음> 이 그런데 절비 어지시려는 건 고맙지만 선생님한테 그럴 만한 제가 있어 보이질 않는만요. 미안해요. 아니, 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 그래 쌍둥이 언니 동 어떤 제가 있어야 동물 가르칠 자격 얻을 수 있어. 누구나 할수 있고 또 얼마든지 할수 있는 거예요. 그게 도대체 뭐요? 절 이기는 거예요. <웃음> 뭘? 야, 용이야, 이럴까? 아, 용이 동무. 아, 이 챌린지요. 동물 배워주는 선생한테. 신기선 동지, 걱정 마십시오. 아무렴 선생님이 따보다 못하겠습니다. 좋았어. 해보기로. <웃음> 자, 준비. 이거나 이겼다고 하루를 나는 건 아니야. 앞으로 두고 보라요, 배어 동지. 이 탄강 처녀도 공중을 날수다는 걸꼭 보여주겠어요. 동, 아? 내 손바닥에 장을 주시 준비하고 기다리지. 일산에만 기적이 길 바라, 탄강 처녀 동. This guy is a motherfucker. 용민호, 응? 도대체 이게 어떻게 된 일이오? 무슨 영혼인지 알아야 할게 아니오? 탄강천은 하늘을 만난다고 시비하고 <웃음> I can make a coal miner fly something something but 저 사람의 
그래. 내가 저런 사람한테서 교회를 펴라 말입니까? 중대, 도대체 뭐요? 알아서 하자. 자, 영구도 빨리. 뭐, 탄광 처녀가 돼서 한우를 못 날아 교회는 아무나 할수 있는 게 아니다. 해부. 교회를 하라면 할수 있는가? 무조건 하겠습니다. 땅구요. 예, 됐어. 나도 하늘을 나겠습니다. 아, 필요하다면 정규 동네 이 미자 주사가 되겠습니다. <웃음> <웃음> 저 난보나 갑니까? 그, 그 밧줄 타고 중심 잡기. <웃음> <웃음> 한번 해보겠습니다. <웃음> 좋았어. 난 결심했어. 이번에 진행되는 노동자 유수 축전에 우리 중대는 영미 동물 기본으로 교회 정목을 들고 나간다. 특색 있게. 어떠저도 모르. 아싸! 아, 우리 야부. 아, 교회를 뻔한다는 법이 있습니까? 아, 우리 노동 계급이 마음만 먹으면 뭐든지 다 해낼 수 있다는 걸 보여줍시다. 어디? 특색 있게. That's all right. 어떠저도 모르. 아, 우리 야부. 아, 교회를 뻔한다는 법이 있습니까? 아, 우리 노동 계급이 마음만 먹으면. Boom. Right there. Working class can do anything if we believe in ourselves. Also, Communion 교회 지도는 영미 동무야. 예? 아니 그럼 신기상 동신요? 난 교회 지도네 오빠요. 자 공격 나팔을 울렸어. 앞으로 알았습니다. 알았습니다. 어, yeah, but if I had felt I had to decline one up with Bob, there's a, there's a big warning when you come into the channel. We watch, we watch trailer park boys sometimes. Nah,我还是蛮不太不在乎。不，哈哈哈哈哈哈。没有，自信없어요。내가지면도시그럽게 이 천여 이거 보통 얘기가 아니구만. 음, 좋소. 그럼 우리 작업반에 한갑이 훨씬 너무 나와이가 있는데 그를 이기면 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 만들어 주겠어요? 아니, 그건 예선이고 우리 작업반 막내이하고 중결승을 해서 이기면 그땐 나한테 오라고. 그게 결승이나요? 그럼. 저요. 가만. 제발 예선에서 미끄러지지 않길 바라네. 결승에서 망신당하지 않길 바래요. <웃음> 결승 아바이 수표? 이건 뭔가? 아바이 이건 최달하는 거예요. 와. <웃음> 까짓거 내 나이에 이기면 어떻고 지면 어떻고 아 이제 놓친데 한 대도 맨날 지는데 뭐 <웃음> 뭐요? 한번 해보자요. 네? 아니 동무 지금 누구 망신하는 거야? Oh, definitely let you know. 진짜 성내기 전에 가라. We're declining that that was the case, comrade. 천이하고 동기 딸 사리를 들을까봐 그래요. 야, 천이하고 발심했다고 소문 날까봐 그래요. 그러니까 여기다가 수표만 좀 해달라질 않아요. <웃음> 어서요. 좋소. <웃음> 아니 여기다 <웃음> 해보기요. Again, we watch Trailer Park Boys, so I wouldn't worry too much. 그럼 농담이었소? 좋아요. 해보자요. 준비됐소? 네. 시. 딱. 자, 이젠 두려 나오. 푸른해요. 자, 가지고 가. 
우리 진짜 남자예요. 야, 주로 기운에 간걸 내가 너무 쓰리다니. 내가 남자야. <웃음> 내가 주었다. <웃음> Creeper. 오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오
예? 아. 아니 저는 나고 아무 상관 없더지 뭐야? 뭐. 정말이야? 아 정말 아니면요? 야, 이 전녀가 <웃음> 우리 도서관에 와서 교회 책 빌려 갔는데도 내 이름까지 하는데도. 예? 어. 아니 저리 정말 달라붙어 해볼 셈인가? 뭐? 달라붙어? 야, 그래도 너희 친구 상관없니? 어? 아, 사실은 그게 아니라 사실이 뭐시리고 너는 헌사전다 그래도 예민 너 아, 성공만 바라고 있는데 앉으라 아, 어머니 앉으라 아, 어머니 앉으라 헌사전 아, 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 아버지, 우린요 좀 공사석 돌로 빛나고 야간 작업까지 하고 있는데 난 교회 책임자가 돼서 남들보다 더 바빠요. <웃음> 음, 힘들지 않아요. 다들 영미 영미하면서 교회를 배웠는데 <웃음> 얼마나 재미나는지 몰라요. <웃음> 야, 아니 넌 거기 가서도 또그 노름이냐? 언제면 철이 들겠니? 교회가 어쨌다고. <웃음> 됐어요. 바빠서 그러니 후에 또 전화할게요. 안녕히 계세요. 야, 야, 영, 영미야. <웃음> 이거 참... 어, oh, yeah, I know, Bob. Or, like, if you watch any of what, like, the Ken Burns documentaries, oh my god. Oh, fuck. I think the quotes from, like, indigenous people is, like, always that same fucking voice. Like, no, you stop. Stop that. <laughs> smoke signals. Yeah. Don't be mentioning that too many times now, Bob, or you'll get me making it later today. The last thing I need is more bread. You'll have me in the kitchen in a few minutes. <laughs> So now his mom approves, I guess.
요새 왜 그래요? 건설장 교회를 본 다음부터 아예 딴 사람이 돼서요. 그래. 부처녀가 자꾸만 눈앞에 오는 거리는 게 진정할 수가 없어. 뭐 혹시 반한 게 아니에요? 뭐? <웃음> Youth are always s u s aren't they? 무슨 소리 말어? 난 지금 지원 동물 대신할 수 있는 사람을 발견한 게. And this is from someone who has two ducks that are more technically as related to geese as they are ducks. 구천여 재능은 나이를 눈가해. 아 그럼 우리한테 데려오면 되는 거지? 봉머리 냉가지 말들 할게 있어요. 개불이 얼쩡이 때 생각 못하고 줄렁거린다더니 박장피 이 바보 같은 게 구천을 깔보고 뭐여까지 줘 이제 와서 구천을 만나자니 얼굴이 뜨끈해서 그래 임 형님 아 마음에 둔다면야 재미원이고 뭐가 있어요 남자가 뭘 그래요 까짓거 우리 공중부들 왜 소랍냐 손바닥이 아니라 울그레라 장울지도 참을 수 있지. 그렇지 않고요. 가자. 가자요. 어. <웃음> geese in the woods. Yeah. Geese can be assholes. That's that is for sure. Birds, right? General. 그러네. 상강 전이한테 머리를 숙였다. 그 소리 했어. I still love them. 기준기 좋아. 아주 좋아. 아 진짜 그랬어야지. 근데 영미 동물 오늘 아침에 탄강으로 내려갔어. 야 중대장 농지 영미 동물 제발 좀 만나기만 해주시오. 아 예. 아 장실 동무 예. 거 얼른 가서 영미 찾아서 좀 데려. 아, 영미는 왜 우리 저기 어디 하지 않았습니까? <웃음> 오늘 아침 탄강 버스 타고 하는 거 바로 주기까지 하고선. 벌써? 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 Merge to the fire ants that was a coal miner and construction worker, and she wants to be an acrobat in the circus. She's proving to all these stuck up uh, people who've been in like the acrobatic world their whole lives that she can do it. She went back to coal mining here, though. <laughs> <laughs> they played in the workers' festival, by the way. They did really good. Put on an acrobatic show. Ducks and, and geese up have sharp, sharper... <laughs> Yeah, they're like beaks, like they're like serrated beaks, right? Congjungnalgeting跟韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候，韩国中表演的时候
희한할지라고야. 아, 교회 배우가 우리 집에를 어떻게 저, 영미동을 우리 계단에 데리고 가져갔습니다. 그래. 아이고, 어서 들어가자. 어서. 고맙습니다. 어서 들어가자고. 아, 이렇습니다. 난 술을 많이 못한다. 젊은이, 편안히 앉으라고. 아, 편안히. 당부와 대상하겠으면 그쯤이야 해야지. 그럼 좋습니다. <웃음> 이게, 이게 야, 야, 영미야, 영미야. 어, 됐어, 됐어. 빨리, 빨리, 빨리. 이거야, 정말 왜 이렇게 덤비냐. 자, 야, 이거 젊은이 안 됐네. 빨리 가서 권리를 좀 가져가. 안 됐네, 정말. 젊은이. 교회단이 아이들 소꿉놀이 하는 데는 아닐 텐데. 우리 애가 아직 아이 때를 재보지 못해 장면 치는 걸 가지고 괜히 들뜨게 하지 말라고. 아닙니다. 우린. 이보라고. 우리 애는 이 아버지가 잘하네. 아, 왜 따님을 그렇게만 보십니까? 영미동문 천성종이 재능의 싹을 가지고 있습니다. 글쎄, 나 같은 건 미쳐 그 싹을 몰라봤지만. 교회단에서도 정말 우리 영미에 대해서 관심이 높단 말인가? 아, 물론이죠. 어떻습니까? 영미동물 보내야죠. 이내이 원해요. 아 이거 애정이죠. 이 펜트즘. 아 우리 이 사람은 저와도 이렇고 나봐도 이렇다. <웃음> 영미야 그렇지? <웃음> 여보게 동갑이. 아이고. 아, 집에 너를 넣었어. 예? Lesson learned. Don't fuck with geese. 아, 집에 너를 넣었네. It's a memory problem. A former partner, his dad's hand, who was 17 years old, could barely see and started chasing geese. His geese were flying up the cliff on Hayden Island. Sprint and chase him before he jumped off a 70-foot cliff. Goddamn geese. 뭐라고 동갑이? 영미를 버리지 않겠다고 거짓을 부린다는데. He's yeah, traumatized yeah. a significant number of kids. I have no doubt. 하지 말고 가거라. 우리가 속탄 생산에만 신경을 쓰다 나니 용매 재내 싸고 미쳐 가려보지 못했거든. 돌아가신 너희 어머니도 기뻐하실 게다. 이제 교회 학원에 입학해서 석성 교육부터 받게 돼요. 국가에서 주는 전문 교육을 말이에요. 당광에서랑. 우리가 이미 수소를 다 했어. 아버지, 할머니. 아이기. 세상에 이 사람아, 우리 집안에도 이런 꿈 같은 일이 다 생기다니. 어. 아니, 동갑인 갑자기 꿀먹을 봉어리가 됐나? 아? 어? 나는 모르겠어. 이제 이 아버지가 키우는지. 집에 있는 기운지. <웃음> 아 우리 용미야 단광에서 키우지. 아니 네? 우리 용미야 나라에서 키우지 엄마. 용미야 축하해 축하해. 한번 가서 잘해봐라. 단광에서 개 배워라. 용미야. 용미야. 야, 힘 끝나라야 돼. 응? 어, 그렇지. <웃음> Love how many times this movie has told us that the working class can do anything. It's a very nice change to see. Sai, 
실패하면 안 된다. 힘들어도 계속해야 한다. 실패하면 안 된다. 힘들어도 계속해야 한다. 실패하면 안 된다. 노영구, 경도 세기 내심 주고 다시. 우리 저성들 분한 모두가 나에게 기대를 걸고 나를 도와주고 있다. 오늘도 힘 없이 한두천 번째 달고 돌아왔는데 여전히 성공 못 하고 있다. 엄마, 나 힘들어. 다시 오늘은 오늘은 그만하자요 용미 여수에 너무 해야 되는 게 아니야 여기서 물러서면 안돼이 국간점을 꼭 넘겨야 앞으로 예비 판정에서 통과될 수 있어 맥을 놓으면안돼 일어서 모소 Love the little animations. I know I, that's like the third time I've said it. But. <웃음>今日，妈妈咪呀，开始说，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，
아, 심기 차라! 장피야, 너희들은 꼭 성공할 거다. 귀신! 자, 그래. 공중에서 잡았으면 좋겠는데 쿡이 옳지 않구만 그래도 우린 꼭 잡게 될 거요 둘라 <놀라> 아니, 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 <laughs> this has always been here, so when you it's like, what is this kid here? Yeah, sticky rice cake. This is a little bit of a <laughs> All right, Bob, that's understandable, comrade. En enjoy, enjoy some rest. I have no doubt we will be chatting again, and I look forward to that. Oh, if you can get a couple more in, you might as well snag them. Mine is the same shape as the flag one, but it's got both Kim Jong Il and Kim Il Sung. Only if Han Jong Il carry it, you'll see some magic. Alright, Yong Mi, you got to catch it. One that was given to me by a Brazilian comrade who presented my uh, presented a summary that I wrote at a social conference there. Are they gonna do it? 
시작하시오. 이정목은 안 되겠구만. 승산이 보이지 않아요. 당분간 버려시키는 것이 어떻겠어? 주원에서 그만하고 내려오시오. 영미야. 했으면 끝까지 내밀어야지 이게 뭐야 우리 노동계급은 물러서는 법을 몰라 저길 좀 봐라 Yeah, the working class never gives up 아니 영미야 넌 우리 당방의 딸이고 조선의 딸이다 넌 지금 우리 조선의 명예를 걸머졌다는 걸 잊지 마라 영미야 다시 해라 다시 하세요 영미 여기 오빠가 왔다 I hear you have burnt the fire at. <laughs> 하늘을 날겠다고 했지. 어, 그래요. 좋아. 날아보자. Again, I appreciate how many times this movie has said the working class can do anything, but that one was a bit heavier than the rest. Huh? Nice for me. Papa, I do dream. I just, as soon as I wake up, it's gone. I don't remember a thing. At least sometimes I do. I don't know. Sometimes I just don't. I mean, maybe I still am dreaming. I just don't remember it. I guess that's probably possible. Most of it, but like the end. communism is based. That's basically that's the moral of the movie, I think, right there. Simply that communism is based. Oh, and we heard multiple times, of course, that the working class can do anything. 
time thinking that was all To say that socialism doesn't work is to overlook the fact that it did work and it worked for hundreds of millions of people. That's incredible, Buff. Yeah, I can't remember a thing when I'm dreaming. Don't forget this one. The revolution that feeds the children gets my support. You saw it in a dream if something during the day reminds you of it? I don't even get that. It's like I can remember it sometimes the instant I wake up, but then as soon as I start trying to think about it, it's like, it's gone. <laughs> it's bizarre. And unfortunate. Kind of. So there's Comrade Kim Goes Flying. That was one wholesome ass movie. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Probably next week, we will uh, maybe watch a documentary. Yeah, GMO, the getting over it goal got met. Oh, no, I didn't. Zoop, do you get that again now? By any chance? So, I think here somewhere there is. These are all the crowd control games we can play, by the way. No, yeah, show me that tonight. Yeah, get me that tonight we riot trailer. I'm interested in checking that out. Punch out. Wait, I must have went too far, right? Like Bennett fought. Maybe it's under B. Oh. Thought getting over it was here. Oh, well, maybe not. Just recently upgraded to 2.0. Maybe it lost that one. Could have swore getting over it was. The games though. Okay, let me see. Here's the trailer. All right, let's see this. What the is this? Is Twenty. The world is in the throes of global capitalism. Workers everywhere toil daily for a pittance. Many work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. But no matter how hard they work, it'll never be enough to be free. For those who do not own the means of production will never know real freedom. But all of that is about to change. Interesting. Okay, last thing. I just watched Lord of the Ring movies on uh, Discord, and the night after Two Towers, I had the semi lucid dream where I was Smeagol but was in our world. And I had stolen an assault rifle and a car and went on the GTA style rampage. Damn. <laughs> what what mod is that? <laughs> Joking. <laughs> that is that is incredible. Okay, that game does look pretty based. Yeah, I'm liking the look of that.
Might have to try that out, Zoop. Did you comrades see this? Look, co-founder of Wikipedia has exposed that CIA and FBI computers were being used to edit Wikipedia articles as early as 2008. Shocking development, isn't it? Who could have seen that coming? Really, you, d you don't say. I mean, I thought that was obvious, but I don't know. That's just the free market at work for you all right there. Okay, bro. You want to play hardball? Fine. You're about to experience the hard knocks of a free market, bitch. Get ready to feel it where it hurts. Your dick. No. No, not his dick. His, his wallet. Yep. Your wallet. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Now, I was wondering about... Let me look on the crowd control thing here. There's a lot of bot... That tracks wiki updates from .government Canada domains. Oh my god. I could have swore getting over it was one of the fucking games here. Must have gotten rid of it. That's a, that's a shame. Blind. <laughs> it's one or the other. It was there. Well, I guess I guess it's a game where you suffer enough anyway. Look at all these ones we could choose from, though. Oh yeah, I mean, government departments, not only have they been... I mean, putting aside the fact that they massage the message that's on Wikipedia or whatever else, um, they basically have a big hand in shaping the mainstream background assumptions as it is anyway, right? Yeah, I guess it's not here now. That's really strange. It was there. Tragic. Well, I guess, I guess I'll be suffering enough in it anyway. Ooh, Project Zomboid would be a good one to do. A while back, someone showed a log of Wikipedia edits, all from IPs and Langley. Not good. I mean, there's this one guy, right? You could even Google it, probably. Guy who edits... Wikipedia. This guy, yeah. More than 2.5 million edits to Wikipedia. This one's Stephen Pruitt guy. Like that is, sure that's not at all making things biased on there. Putting aside, again, that's completely putting aside the whole CIA thing. Oh yeah. Also wanted to look at this. July 30th is the 77th anniversary of the promulgation of the law on sex equality. Before the liberation of Korea in 1944, the Korean women had to suffer feudal discrimination and maltreatment, along with the miserable fate of the colonial stateless nation. President Kim Il-sung put an end to the history of their miserable fate. Already in the days of the anti-Japanese armed struggle, he set it as a task of the emancipation of women to ensure equal rights of men and women, raise the social status of women, and to respect the personality of women. After achieving the historic cause of national liberation, he thought to it that the law on sex equality was promulgated on July 30, 1946. Oh, what? You found it? How could I, how did I not see it there? That's, that's ridiculous. Okay. Oh, apparently it is there.
All right, well, there you go. I will figure that out then before we actually play getting over it on the weekend. And you comrades will be able to make me suffer even better, even more directly. Buff's already exchanging your com <laughs> He's already getting ready for it. Those coins will be good for whatever game we play, by the way. The nine article law stipulates that women have equal rights with men in all domains of political, economic, and cultural life. Equal rights to elect and be elected with men in the elections to power organs at all levels and rights to social insurance and education. Whatever I just did and asked this sub coins. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, by the way. But so this weekend, I mean, what it, even if you miss this weekend, what, what it allows you to do is you can use also channel points with it. So if you save your labor vouchers, when I actually am doing the, the game that we're playing, you'll see that you can exchange your labor vouchers as well for those crowd control coins. And then you can use those to affect the game, whatever I'm doing. If it's Zelda, like last weekend we were playing Zelda and one of the comrades kept changing the floor to ice. And yeah, if you go on that getting over it, or if you go to this, sorry, crowd control, this thing here, you can see all the different games that we can play. Just go to crowd control and then, yeah. You get a peek at all the, I, I can pretty much do all of them, especially any of the retro games. We can do those, no problem. Under this law, Korean women are still enjoying the same rights as men in all fields of political life, working life, education, cultural life, and family life. Political rights are the most important of the rights enjoyed by the women in DPRK. They have the same social status as men and exercise the right to elect and to be elected. They have an active part in the society as deputies to the Supreme People's Assembly, heroines, doctors, people's athletes, and senior officials in charge of major sectors of the country. After graduating from school, they can either go to university or be provided with stable jobs and working conditions by the state according to their wishes and talents and are paid wages on par with those of men for the same work. With women leaving remarkable traces in the course of the development of the state and society, such women officials as the chairwoman of the Pyongyang City People's Committee the workshop managers of Pyong Pyongyang Kim Jong-suk Textile Mill, the managers of Sangfo Spinning Mill, the headmistress of Kung San Kindergarten, who trained many musical prodigies, and a keeper who has worked in the Central Zoo since her girlhood. Sportswomen and women scientists who demonstrated the country's dignity, spirit, and might to the whole world and the women who gave birth to many children and raised them up excellently to become heroes. PhDs, merited, keeper, and people's athletes in the last 10 years alone. The Korean women enjoy meticulous and generous benefits from the state, including the maternity leave system and the social policy of taking care of families with many children. They are, the leading, they are leading a worthwhile life, enjoying public love, and respect as gardeners, patriots, and women revolutionaries who tend to families and societies. The Korean women boundlessly love the socialist country, which is their destiny, future, and life, and devote their all to the prosperity of the country. Then there is another article here from Pyongyang Times I wanted to look at. Radical improvement brought about in education. Over a decade has passed since the law on the enforcement of universal 12-year compulsory education was adopted. So what this means is, in case you're not familiar, 12-year compulsory education means that there is no other curriculum that can exist other than the public curriculum. 
So what this means in practice is that there can be no such thing as like a private Catholic school or a school for, you know, kids who are more affluent. Their parents can pay money and get like a better school for their kids. There's nothing like that can exist there. That everybody, every school and every child receives the 12, the same 12 year education. The enforcement of universal 12-year compulsory education was an important measure embodying the no ennobling views on the future of the younger generation of the Workers' Party of Korea and another generation in building of education in the new century. A great deal of achievements has been made since then. The education system has further been perfected to train cre creation-oriented talents teaching contents and methods constantly updated in line with the global trend of educational development and educational conditions and environment of all educational institutions of the country radically improved. Educators have made a proactive efforts to create and widely introduce new teaching methods, while a well-organized technical senior middle school system has been established to accelerate development in all sectors across the country including metallurgical, electric power, and coal industries. As a climate of attaching importance to education prevails throughout the country, public interest in it grows significantly, and its position has been raised from a major factor decisive of the future and destiny of the country and nation to the pivot fully responsible for the future. Education has become one of the most important state affairs. All the people are deeply interested in the education of younger generations and the education sector is prioritized at present. And this reality is unthinkable apart from the leadership of General Secretary Kim Jong-un. With a deep insight into the role and importance of education in the revolution and construction, the General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea unveiled a grand plan for laying the external foundation for national prosperity by stepping up the building of a powerful socialist country, but bringing about a radical turn in education work. As he gave instructions to officials as to education work of the country, one day in June 2012, he said that education for training talents at present, an era of science and technology, is an important undertaking, decisive of the destiny of the country and the future of the nation, and pointed to the need to examine the general secondary education system in all aspects and establish it properly. As a result, the law on the enforcement of universal 12-year compulsory education was adopted at the sixth session of the 12th Supreme People's Assembly of DPRK in September that year, and he had ever since put his heart and soul into its enforcement. He published such works as let us make our country let us make ours a country of education and talent power by bringing about a radical improvement in education in the new century and teachers should fulfill their duty as career revolutionaries in implementing the party's policy on making a radical improvement in education provide guidelines for the sex, successful education process progress sorry so what's uh, what's key here is we always talk about how the Workers' Party is independent of all state organs. And so how does a Workers' Party in a socialist country lead? Well, it does so through ideological education and persuasion. That's why you always see in socialist countries, whether it's Vietnam or Cuba, the leader of the Workers' Party is giving works like these, and this is the guidance it gives, as opposed to, like, being in charge of state organs directly or something. Unlike in a capitalist country where the party does have direct hold of state organs in a socialist country, that's not the case. The people themselves have direct hold of the state organs. The party can only convince them and persuade them. And he made sure party and state measures were taken in, in succession to develop education. At the third plenary meeting of the 7th Central Committee of the WPK, he said the development of education, along with science, is an undertaking conducted under a far-reaching plan 
to maintain the lifeline of the revolution, put forward the slogan, Let us make a leap forward by dint of science and guarantee the future by dint of education, and clearly indicated their orientation and ways to carry out the party's plan for making the country filled with talents by putting great efforts into educational development. As he attached importance to the role played by educational institutions in developing the education of the country, he ensured the school building headquarters were set up in the capital provinces, cities, and counties in October 2014, energetically led the effort and continuously made field inspection tours of educational units. Looking around renovated Pyongyang Teachers Training College in January 2018, he stressed that the college should train excellent teachers who would become the firm roots and base manure in the education of younger generations by bearing deep in mind the party's intention so as to make a tangible contribution to strengthening the teaching staff and kindergartens at primary schools. In the, in the policy speech delivered at the 7th session of the 14th Supreme People's Assembly on September 8, 2022, he underlined once again that it is the consistent policy of the DPRK government to attach importance to education and direct efforts into its development and set forth important tasks for the education sector. And he ensured that important matters for the country's educational development were discussed and decided upon at the 8th plenary meeting of the 8th WPK Central Committee in June this year. Under the leadership of the General Secretary who prioritized education work, flames of radical improvement in the education flare up more fiercely throughout the country. Hmm, Korean-style barbecue? Korean-style barbecue is widely known as one of the best, three best-loved foods in the DPRK, along with kimchi and mung bean pancake. Unlike foreign barbecues, where the meat is brushed with seasonings before roasting or dipped in flavors after roasting, the Korean-style one is distinctive national dish prepared by laying up meat spiced in advance and roasting it over charcoal fire. The traditional dish originated in the period of Kaguro, 277 BC to AD 668. The barbecue of Kaguro, which had savory and unique flavor, widely known to neighboring countries. According to the old record, Sasingi from, the Chi from the China's Qin Dynasty, Chinese nobles and rich peoples of that time always served this important food. Sorry, always served this food at important feasts. The tradition of Korean style barbecue, dating back to Koguro, continued to spread throughout the Middle Ages. A beef barbecue called Soyajok was widely distributed in the period of Koryo. The name Soyajok means that the barbecue is the best accompaniment to drink at a snowy winter night. The barbecue cooked in a special method was famous speciality of Kegyang, the, or Kaesong today, the capital of Koryo. A Dongju Ki, a historical book compiled in the early 20th century, record, records the recipe of Soyajok, ox rib or heart, were roasted after adding seasonings like oil, garlic, and ginger, taken out when the meat is half cooked, put in cold water for a while, and then roasted again over charcoal fire. This barbecue was not only tender, but also very tasty. The Korean style barbecue got more varied and kind, and its cooking methods developed in a diverse way. The period of feudal Joseon dynasty came a beef, ox rib, pork, pheasant, and chicken barbecues. The recipes varied from grilling to roasting meat on skewers or after wrapping it in wet paper. Korean style barbecue method flavored by the people was added to national and tangible cultural heritage. That's from a researcher at the Folklore Institute of the Academy of Social Sciences. And finally, one last one from Pyongyang Times here. Foreign personages pay congratulatory visits to DPRK missions. 
or personages of government organs, political parties, organizations, and institutions in different countries visited the DPRK missions in their country between July 20th and 27th to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Korean people's victory in the Fatherland Liberation War, aka the Korean War as we call it in the West. They laid flower baskets and bouquets before the portraits of smiling President Kim Il-sung and Chairman Kim Jong-il, and art pieces depicting them standing together and bowed to them. Among the visitors were the deputy of the State Duma of Russia, the mayor of Artem City in the Maritime Territory of Russia, the chairman of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Bangladesh, chairperson of the Central Executive Committee of Bangladesh National Socialist Party, the general secretary of the Central Committee of the Bangladesh Communist Party, Marxist-Leninist, chairman of the Bangladesh Korea Friendship and Solidarity Committee, chairperson of the Bangladesh Institute of Juche Idea, members of the Laos-Korea Friendship Association, personages of the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Public Security of Vietnam, the National Committee for the Study of the Juche Idea of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Democratic Party of Equatorial Guinea, and the Mexico DPRK Friendship Parliamentary Group, and the Brazilian Communist Party. Members of the Popular Liberation Movement of Angola, too, visited the DPRK mission to mark V-Day. Meanwhile, the Beijing International Cultural Development Center for China DPRK Friendship and other units of China sent flower baskets to DPRK mission in their country on July 27, the 70th anniversary of the War of Victory. How many of you even knew that there was a Laos-Korea Friendship Association? <laughs> Or how about Juche ID of the Democratic Republic of Congo? All right, and then I had a couple here that I wanted to look at. Government statistics confirm unprecedented rise in equality in Canada. I don't say. Oh, I took the un don't understand investments out of the sound bits. On July 4th, Statistics Canada published first quarter 2023 report on income consumption, savings, and wealth of people in Canada. The figures unequivocally inequ confirm that the gap between rich and poor is widening at the highest rate ever recorded. Income inequality between the richest and poorest households increased between 2022 and 2023. With the poorest families seeing their income grow less quickly than the average, income from the self-employment fell by almost 7%. The share of income from government benefits increased by about 50% for these households. Also, rising interest rates have caused the poorest to lose an average of $500 in 2022 additional credit care card costs. For the wealthiest, these new costs were offset by an increase in investment income, which enabled average net gains of nearly $1,200 for the same period. This also saw their savings grow from a fourth consecutive year by an average of more than $13,500. Hit hard by the rising cost of living, middle-income households saw their savings decline by an average of $1,306 in 2022. The poorest have lost an average of $8,289 in savings over the same period. Again, it's expensive to be poor. An amount that risks being added to the debt loads of these households. The richest 20% of the people in Canada currently own nearly 70% of the country's wealth. The poorest 40% share a meager 2.7%. The impoverishment of the poorest people is the main reason that the inequality gap is widening at the fastest rate ever recorded in Canada. This inequity hits young people and new immigrants the hardest. The debt-to-income ratio for people under age 35 crossed the 200% mark this year. That of people aged 35-45 reached 276%, up 17% from the previous year. 
this situation has huge consequences, as it leads to the impoverishment of an increasingly large part of the population. In addition, the constant attacks on public services, the financialization of the rental market, the repercussions of rising interest rates contribute to increasing the burden of inequality, which is becoming heavier and more deadly. For the government, the chambers of commerce, and employers, the solution is to grant even more money and concessions to those who already have it, with less in workers' hands and more social in inequity. This is not a situation that can be solved through legislation and temporary relief measures. Structural inequalities and the concentration of wealth in the hands of small numbers of haves are fundamental elements of the capitalist system. Working people need to question this system and demand its replacement by socialism. Here's one here that I wanted to highlight because a lot of people are still under the mistaken belief that Canada is not somehow a nuclear power. Once is too often. So why is Canada still supporting nuclear weapons? Most people in Canada believe the country is a non-nuclear weapon state. After all, nuclear weapons aren't built, stored, tested, or deployed here. It's a comforting feeling, justifiably so, and one that the government enjoys stoking, but it's not completely true. For starters, Canada has a recent history of enthusiastically supporting nuclear weapons, including deploying them here. Only been since 1984 that there have been no nuclear arms stationed in Canada. From 1963 to then, there were four tactical nuclear weapon systems in this country, which deployed several hundred nuclear warheads. And it wasn't just in Canada. As Yves Engler writes, quote, At the height of Canadian nuclear deployments in the late 1960s, the RCAF had between 250 and 450 U.S. atomic bombs at its disposal in Europe. Based in Germany, the CF-104 Starfighter, for instance, operated without conventional weapons and carried nothing but a thermonuclear warhead. Pretty fucking sick. Ah, but that all changed when nukes were withdrawn in Canada in 1984, right? Not quite. Even after 1984, Canada has continued to actively participate in nuclear weapons development and proliferation through its membership in NATO and NORAD. As a member of NATO Nuclear Planning Group, Canada not only supports but actively maintains and administers NATO's nuclear arsenal and its aggressive first strike policy. As an ongoing founder, sorry, as an ongoing funder to the tune of over 600 million of the Joint Strike Fighter program, Canada has actively and knowingly contributed to the development of the F-35 fighter jet the B-6112 nuclear bomb which it's specifically designed to carry. As a purchaser of the F-35, Canada will actively and knowingly become part of the multinational delivery mechanism for this new U.S. nuclear bomb. If this active funding and development of nuclear arms and delivery systems were not enough, the Canadian government has also worked to stall and derail international efforts at nuclear disarmament. One of the most important recent breakthroughs in the area of disarmament and non-proliferation, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, TPNW, which was signed in 2017, came into force in 2021 after 50 countries ratified it. The treaty prohibits countries that are party to it from developing, testing, producing, stockpiling, stationing, transferring, using or threatening to use nuclear weapons. For nuclear armed states joining the treaty, it also provides for a time framework nuclear armed states, who are party to it, to eliminate their nuclear weapons program. 
It's a big step forward, but Canada hasn't ratified it. In fact, since 2018, Canada has consistently voted against annual UN General Assembly resolutions calling on all states to sign and ratify the TPNW. The current Liberal government even rejected a 2022 parliamentary petition calling on Canada to break with NATO's nuclear policy and immediately sign and commit to ratifying the TPNW. With Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Joy insisting that a step-by-step approach to nuclear disarmament remains the most viable pathway to achieving meaningful and lasting progress. End quote. In the lead-up to the TPNW, the t- Canadian government repeatedly tried to derail the process. The International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, the ICAN, which won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2017, notes, quote, 2016, Canada voted against the UN General Assembly resolution that established the formal mandate for states to commence negotiations on a legally binding instrument to prohibit nuclear weapons, leading towards their total elimination. ICAN further states, quote, in a document sent to NATO members ahead of the vote, The United States strongly encouraged members, including Canada, to vote against the resolution, not merely abstain. In addition, it said that if the treaty negotiations do commence, allies and partners should refrain from joining them. Clearly, Canada supports the retention, development, proliferation, testing, stockpiling, use, and threat of nuclear weapons. And why? The answer is frustratingly simple. Because of the country's military alliance and integration with the United States, which includes its membership in military alliances like NATO and NORAD. 2021, public opinion poll found that nuclear weapons are a far greater concern for people in Canada than the government actions would suggest. Specifically, there's a groundswell of support for disarmament including through disinvestment in companies involved in nuclear weapons. At a time when the Canadian government is preparing to purchase 88 nuclear weapons-capable fighter jets, which both the F-35 and Super Hornet are, a large majority, 80% of people polled, said that there needs to be more work on a global level to eliminate nuclear weapons. This includes 74% who indicated that Canada should sign and ratify the TPNW even if it comes under pressure from the U.S. or NATO to not do so. This popular view, clearly at odds with the Trudeau government, which is working overtime to drum up public support for increased funding and support for NATO and NORAD, and for increased arms race generally. This month, people from across Canada and around the world Pause to remember the horrors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Worth remembering that also that this country continues to be guided by policies, which would see those horrors inflicted again. It's time for Canada to sign the TPNW. It's time for Canada to get out of NATO and NORAD and all aggressive imperialist military alliances. Time for comprehensive nuclear disarmament. One atomic bombing is too often. Okay, and one last article here I wanted to look at. Oh yeah, and then I'll also show you I'll also show you all a link that you can use. Well, Here we go. Okay. So, unions and communities stand united against New Brunswick. What we're doing here with these articles, by the way, is combating that all too often repeated narrative that Canada is somehow the nice country compared to U.S. Unions and communities stand against united against New Brunswick government attacks on 2S slash LGBTIQ plus rights. Blaine Higgs' revisions to policy 
713 are a dog whistle to the far right across Canada. New Brunswick's Conservative Premier Blaine Higgs and Education Minister Bill Hogan have drawn international attention in the past two months over their government's attack on the democratic rights of 2S slash LGBTIQ plus youth. This attack comes in the form of revisions weakening policy 713, which established minimum standards for schools to ensure a safe, welcoming, and inclusive environment for 2S slash LGBTIQ plus students. Policy 713 was implemented in 2020 after a lengthy consultation process under Higgs' former education minister. On May 5th, the New Brunswick Teachers Association, NBTA, held their annual council day, a professional development opportunity for teachers which received some funding from the provincial government. Since 2012, Council Day has included workshops by Pride in Education, PIE, teacher-led initiative, and educational nonprofit, which helps train teachers in inclusive education and issues faced by 2S slash LGBTIQ plus students. PIE has received support from both liberal and conservative governments for these important educational nif initiatives, at least until now. No doubt emboldened, of course, by the U.S., but again, not to say that Canada was ever or ever is the nice guy. This year, just nine days before Council Day, PIE received written notice from the Department of Education that their request for funding had been denied in a last-minute heel turn, despite having received verbal confirmation of funding in early April. To make matters worse, a small group of protesters picketed a Council Day event holding signs reading perverts in education and shame on teachers instead of standing with teachers. The provincial government issued a press release distancing itself from them, denying its involvement in Council Day and telling the public to direct their anger towards the NBTA. Fucking disgusting. In a statement the next day, NBTA President Connie Keating said, quote, None of this was unexpected, unfortunately. We have been aware of this kind of hate towards teachers and public education being perpetrated online across North America for some time. And if you participate in that, by the way, you were not a communist. What was unexpected was the statement released from the government at the end of the day. Teachers needed you to step up and support them, to educate, to stand with them against hate and misinformation. Instead, we face it alone. Unquote. The Tories, what you call Republicans in the States, doubled down, not only refusing to stand with teachers facing harassment and threats, but announcing within days that they plan to open up Policy 713 for review, citing quote unquote hundreds of complaints from concerned parents allegedly inundating Minister Hogan's office. In an independent study of the proposed review, New Brunswick Youth and Child Advocate was provided with only three such complaints and criticized the review as quote-unquote incoherent. Though despite claiming having hundreds of these complaints, they were only able to show evidence of three of them? What the fuck? And this is, what the, this is exactly what these fucking right quasi-populists do in all their attacks against, against people. It's they distort the actual... They don't just distort facts, they completely fabricate facts. Myths. And then they try and shore it up with like Nazi... with like Nazi quasi-science, right? Yeah, they play by their own rules. They make up their own science completely. Again, it's Nazi quasi-science. A lot of it is what it's based on. Echoing social conservatives in the United States, Higgs began invoking quote-unquote parents' rights and a supposed lack of involvement from parents during Policy 713's development as reason for a review. 
And, but thankfully, a vast array of labor unions, political parties, and democratic and civil society organizations came out in opposition to the review of Policy 713. Quote, we stand in solidarity with the New Brunswick Teachers Association, Pride in Education, and the 2S LGBTQI plus community, whether this government likes it or not, unquote. Said CUPE. SCFB New Brunswick, that's the Union for Teachers. Unifor called on its membership to, quote, join the fight and stop this rollback of human rights in New Brunswick, unquote. Meanwhile, Chief Allen Poches Jr. of the Sitensic First Nation said he would, quote, not stand by and watch the Higgs government water down these protections. Instead of protecting valued but vulnerable members of our families, this government capip capitulated to a small group of conspiracists, unquote. First Nations people always, always on fire, getting it right as usual. Organizations such as EGALI Canada and Canadian Civil Liberties Association, the New Brunswick Women's Council, and Career Momentum added their voices to the chorus of criticism. On May 13th, Fier Terif- Pietra Fredericton Pride and over a dozen other 2S slash LGBTIQ plus advocacy groups organized a large rally in support of Policy 713. At the provincial legislature in Fredericton, speaking to a crowd of around 300, Communist Party organizer and transgender woman June Patterson castigated the Tory government for their underhanded attacks on the 2S slash LGBTIQ plus youth. Quote, this fight isn't just a fight for inclusive language, a fight to save lives, to force this government of the wealthy to do something that protects the people. A government that would undo these protections would have blood on its hands, full stop, unquote. Speakers from the MBTA, CUPE, Green Party, and others similarly criticized the government for its attack on human rights. Petition in support of Policy 713 and against the review has collected over 18,000 signatures to date. Unperturbed by broad public opposition, Higgs and Hogan pushed ahead with their review. Important stakeholders such as the 2S slash LGBTIQ plus community, MBTA, the UNB Faculties of Education and Gender and Women's Studies and the College of Psychologists of New Brunswick were shut out of the process. The newly revised Policy 713 that took effect July 1st has been significantly weakened. Most notably, the new version forbids teachers and staff from using a student's preferred name and pronouns without parental consent if they are under 16 and instructs educators to direct 2S slash LGBTIQ plus students to mental health professionals. Again, Canada is no better than the U.S., literally going backwards in human rights. It also removes language protecting the right of transgender students to participate in school sports. The province's child and youth advocate called the changes, quote, incredibly vague and shoddy, unquote, and word that they could open the door to discrimination, and no doubt will. The College of Psychologists in New Brunswick called on the government to rescind the changes, re- warning of the harm that will be caused to students by the revised policy. Yeah, technically that should also forbid nicknames and preferred names for CIS people too. But in technicality, March of the Finance. Of course, we know that um, this, is tra- this is being passed because of a small conspiratorial group of transphobes. And so that is, it's going to be turned against, we know exactly who it's going to be turned against, right? That's why we just have to fight for this repeal of this completely. Lifting rhetoric from U.S. and Turf Island, Higgs has previously voiced concerns about quote-unquote fairness in girls' sports due to inclusion of trans students. Blah, fuck. 
you say that, if you ever say that, I know as, as soon as I started reading this article, I noticed my viewers started. <laughs> but if you say that, you can also leave as well. It would be preferable. If you say anything like this, please. Ask you to, to, to unfollow the channel if that's the case. The New Brunswick Interscholastic Athletics Association, which represents all school sports, has previously said that there have been no concerns about fairness and that it has received zero complaints about trans kids in the last decade. Again, they always pull the shit out of nowhere. This concern for sports. It's literally non-existent. Never has existed. It's, again, something that's coming from a conspiratorial group of transphobes. Yeah, Michael Phelps is literally built different. But, and that helps him swim, but nobody gives a damn. Yeah, there's no... And, like, the whole, the whole idea of there being some sort of biological, quote-unquote, markers for gender is completely erroneous. There's no such thing. That's a fucking, that is his studio science that actual science is now smashing and, and proving to be completely untrue. That it has nothing, there's no biological markers. That's completely shit that humans made up in order to try and fucking categorize people. Yeah, anti trans laws affect CIS people too. For example, definitely, definitely, March of the Finance, good point. For example, CIS women being banned for participating in sports due to anti trans regulation, right? Because, again, and, and this ties into exactly what I'm saying. There's no such thing as like biological markers for men and women. And that's why that happens with it, it targets both trans and CIS women. Because it says like, oh, if you have this much testosterone, then you can't compete in sports. But it's not like women, it's, it's not down to any sort of biological marker. Some women have higher testosterone than men. That's just, that's the way it is. And your biology has nothing to do with your gender. It's, it's something that forms while you're, of course, developing it's something that, you know, whatever your sexual orientation, whatever your gender is something that, of course, is developed yourself and is, you know, not a personal choice, but it's also not something that's indicated by any biological markers either. Just same as race, right? There's no biological markers separating race like that. Even less so than, like, like there, there's no comparison. Like, a, a human of one race compared to the human of another race has no, like, biological distinctions like Nazi race science would have you believe. In addition to opposition, Blaine Higgs has attracted support from the far right across Canada for his attacks on 2S slash LGBTIQ plus youth, including from far right media outlets such as Rebel and True North. An international far-right darling, Jordan Peterson. Blah. What a piece of shit that guy is. Far-right clearly sees Higgs' attack as an opportunity to reopen the debate on 2S slash LGBTIQ plus acceptance on a Canada-wide level and is salivating at the opportunity to roll back these hard-won democratic gains. And that's the important part, too. These aren't things that were given to us by politicians or handed down, right? These are things that people fought with their blood, with their lives in order to realize and materialize. And now it's being rolled by, back. Meanwhile, Cuba and socialist countries are, you know, constantly improving their family codes. And in Cuba, you have now one of the progressive most admirable family codes that should be a model for the entire world. But this isn't just an attack on the rights of 2S slash LGBTIQ plus students. It's part of a broader assault on organized labor and the very institution of public education. Across North America, teachers, a powerful and respected section of organized labor, have been under sustained and multi-sided attack for years. The right wing in the United States and increasingly Canada is spreading hatred and misinformation to 
which paints teachers as lazy, overpaid, quote-unquote, groomers, indoctrinating children to hate their country, their parents, and God. These vile lies are part of a concentrated effort to turn public opinion against teachers and their unions, and ultimately to weaken the public education system with an eye to privatization. With the strike on the horizon, in New Brunswick, teachers such as Dennis Boulier, member of the Circle 33 AEFNB, the francophone affiliate of the NBTA, are clear-eyed. Quote, After negotiations with the government have broken down in the spring, the NBTA is preparing a strike vote at the end of August. No coincidence, the Higgs government has engaged a section of parents that are ideologically aligned with him and on board with his changes to Policy 713. Parents have always been an important factor in teachers' strikes. And it wouldn't surprise me that Higgs is trying to put a wedge between teachers and parents by implying that teachers are keeping secrets from parents when it comes to pronouns and desired names. He's trying to make it seem like teachers are not worth parents' trust to undermine the credibility of our demands, unquote. The solidarity shown by the labor movement with New Brunswick's 2S slash LGBTIQ plus community is promising and forms the basis for a broad united movement of labor and people's organizations that's needed to fight back against the anti-popular government of Blaine Higgs and the Tories. As CUPE, SCFP at New Brunswick President Steve Dross declared at May 13th rally in defense of Policy 713, quote, your fight is our fight, unquote. Only united we can defend our rights, and only united we can hope to win a better, more just future for all. And remember, as I always say, that kernel of Marxism, right, is the liberation and the revolution to end all oppression of human by human. And if you're not fighting on all fronts, you fight just on the class front, then you're not being a very good communist. And I would argue not a communist at all, in fact. You have to fight on all fronts. You have to fight against racism, against gender discrimination, against transphobia, and so on. Because it's your duty as a revolutionary to fight against all oppression of human by human. Simple as that. So here's a little list of DPRK movies. Now, I also want to watch... Exactly. None of us are free until all of us are free. Perfectly put, March. I want to remind you, comrades, too, that we're going to watch more movies on this channel. I want to watch Chinese, Cuban, Vietnam. I got some suggestions in our Discord already. But you can also check out this playlist for any ideas as well. I do recommend you consider joining us over at Red Star Vanguard. We're a multi-streamer, multi-gaming community. We also, of course, talk communist education. We got lots of great resources in there from comrades from all over the world. And uh, it's a good place to find fellow gamers to play games with who aren't reactionaries. And we also have Comrade Valkyrie, who's a recognized streamer in there as well, and Comrade Vivian. It's not just my own. It's a community Discord, not just a Leaping Larry Discord. So I'm just one channel in there, which means when you go in, we ask that you fill out the little questionnaire that comes up. Just let them know you're from the Leaping Larry channel, and I'll add you to a tag so that I can tell you when I'm going live, if you so wish. And in my Leaping Larry chat, you can uh, request any sort of thing that you want me to watch. I've got lots on the playlist here upcoming. Of course, we always watch our Squirrel and Hedgehog in the morning. And lately, we've been watching some stuff from my own channel while we wait for people to filter in, and I roll the, the uh, intro song. Want to watch this. I think we're going to watch this one tomorrow. So I'm trying to still think about what our next movie is going to be next Monday, but... I sort of have Ukraine and Fire on mine by Oliver Stone. Unless you all can think of a better one, or unless a suggestion comes up in Discord, that might be a good next one. Unless we get impatient and watch it earlier in the week, which is something that could happen as well. And then tomorrow is going to be 
our Tuesday theory read. And we are reading Red Skin, White Masks. Anytime you're looking for what we're working up through as a read, you can type the command and then reading in the chat. You'll get a link to it right there. We're on chapter three. We only got a few more chapters left, and then we're going to be going on to a Kim Jong Il work. And then I did promise the translator of the new Stalin book that's coming out, the Lucardo translation, first official English translation. By official, we mean, of course, blessing of the family and uh, friends of Lucardo. That's going to be coming out. should be any day now. I heard people are getting theirs in the mail. Here's the translator here. Got his copy. Beautiful looking book. Our graphic designer, I always say, is fantastic. The inside of the hardcover. Is there any place where you can read about special economic zones? Like what, which special economic zones in which country? I did mention, uh, I did mention to the translator of the Lucerta book that, yeah, I would, uh, I would read this on stream. So now we're going to have to do that. In DPRK, um, I mean, I'm not sure if I covered that in my economics or not. There might be something if you go to publications. See if this website will load. So if there's nothing in here, what we'll do is we'll get into a discussion about it someday. But I mean, special economic zones in the DPRK are just basically uh, long leased government properties that Chinese and other friendly countries can enter into contracts with to like have a plant or a factory or whatever it is in DPRK. Now the land and control over the factory ultimately still rests in DPRK's hands, but it's like a joint cooperation venture. Um, if, let's see. Now let's see if this works. These ones here, um, understand in Korea books. You might find something in where is it? Be the next page. Might find something right here in the economy one. You may find something in there, powerful finger. If not, we'll try to elaborate more on it in the future this is a this is just a good site in general and by the way where we're talking about the dprk education system today i think maybe a good idea where is it would be i know i've i know i've whoops wrong yeah there it is i know i've shown this on stream before but a good idea might be to check out these DPRK textbooks here. There's a couple of English ones we could look at on stream. I think that's what we'll do like Wednesday and Wednesday and maybe Friday. Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, we'll do our read of indigenous. So we'll get through two more chapters of this this week. So we'll do chapter three tomorrow. We'll do chapter four the day after. Yeah, yeah, C++, they got all kinds of... Uh, of course, now, keep in mind, most of this is going to be in Korean, as I'm sure you can imagine. It, it is DPRK textbooks, like so. But there are ones, if you just look along the sidebar here, when you're scrolling down, you'll see ones like Genius 4 English right here. So this one will be mostly English. It still will have some Korean in it, because this is actually meant to be a book to teach Koreans to speak English, but it also happens to include, like if you look at here at the, at the cable of contents, <laughs> look at this. 
Who killed the natives in Australia? Pollutus, pollution in the country. Yeah. And there, I mean, there's more here too. Here's a, here's a number five. This one got. Discover South Africa, discover India, discover American English, discover the West Indies. Yeah, I think these would be cool to check out. What do you think, chat? Yay? Nay? Give me a yay or a nay. Are we going to read some of these? The world's population. The world's water. Discover Ireland. Ooh, some of these look actually quite interesting, to be honest. Oh, and this is like middle school. Well, this is grade six, I guess. Oh, no, secondary. So this is, yeah, this is middle school then. This is like junior high. Junior high, and then there's some secondary education stuff here as well. Socialist morality. Damn, wish we could read that one. But here's secondary English. Yeah, we'll, we'll check these out. This one. Got so this one, this one is more strictly talking about... At the end, there's a little bit of something. But that one's strictly talking about the English. Yay. That will be cool, I say. All right. Awesome. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at this sometime during this week when we're not doing our, our read of Red Skin, White Masks. And then after Red Skin, White Masks, we get a Kim Jong-il work. And then whenever you go to Iskra Books, it will be coming soon. If you don't know, I do a little bit of work over here at Iskra Books. And coming very soon. That's why I would tell him the translator. I'll, I'll read that for him. This, I heard this one's good. I didn't get a chance to look at it yet, though. But this is about to come out. I'm thinking a couple more days and you'll be able to read the free PDF here. There's also soft cover and there's a hard cover as well. But there will be a free PDF here. So, you know, keep this bookmarked. You won't want to miss that. We'll be reading it on stream when it is released. Probably after the Kim Jong the next Kim Jong Il work. And then I saw one comrade has already purchased some tokens in preparation for what is to come, which is my pain and suffering. That is what's to come. The story of Dracula on the last voyage of the What is this? Evil is on this ship. Oh my god. Dracula on a boat? Dracula. Oh my god. Yeah, defunding every defunding education tends to have a detrimental effect. Weird, I know. <laughs> what the hell was that? That was So yeah. This weekend, comrades, you got me to play this. This horrible hike up an impossible mountain. I could have made something you did it. liked. A game that was empowering, that would save your progress and inch you steadily forward. Since success is delicious, that would have been wise. Instead, I must confess, this isn't nice. It tastes of bitterness. It's capricious. It sets setbacks for the ambitious. It lacks lenience. It's bracing and inhumane. But not everyone's the same. I created this game for a certain kind of person. To hurt them. I've been meaning to finish the unofficial translation of the Lucerto Stalin book, but put it on hold when I saw that Iskra was translating it. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, we hope it'll... We think it's, you know, it's just... It's a blessing. It, it's been given the blessing by Lucerta's family and friends, so... We just think it's going to be a more accurate and official translation and not a secondary translation. Of course, as you know, all the work we do at Iskra Books, like any books that we have for sale here, like, let's see, what is the price of this? Just curious. 
Yeah, 14 right now it's on sale, but $14, $16 usual price. Because just so you know, like we don't make any kind of any kind of like return on any of these. We literally charge whatever it costs to just print them and distribute them and that's it. That's why we we make sure that we always have them as free PDFs here. And that's why I always encourage comrades if you do support my work to come on here or one of the other platforms and support me there because what we do at Escra Books is completely non we see no funds from that at all ourselves. It's completely so that we can get it out to you guys. Because we think it's important, you know, to make this stuff as available and accessible as we possibly can. Which again is why we do free PDFs of all of this. I think the one about Molotov was not fully translated. Yeah, I remember the, the Molotov memoirs. Um, who was it? Uh, Grover Fur like published part of the memoirs for some of the work that he was doing, actually on an article that we have previously read on this channel, which was this Yezov article. And I think for another book he was reading as well. For another book he was writing, sorry. But yeah, definitely some of the some of the stuff he was doing was Shit. Welcome, comrade Seb's Dev. Salute, comrade. Thank you for our rating. Very much appreciate that. Welcome in, Raiders. Leaping Larry. You can call me Comrade Larry. Or, or just Comrade. Or Comrade Shane. I got a whole lot of names. I don't know what's going on with me. <laughs> When you when you've been when you've been doing it long enough, people just you get lots of different names, I guess. Thing. How was your stream, Sebs? Hope it went well. We were uh, we watched a very wholesome movie. Comrade Kim goes flying. It was fucking great. Sebs, in this movie, I've I've never I've never heard a movie that said the working class can do anything so many times as I have in this movie that we watched. They said it at least five times. The working class can do anything we put our minds to. Great. It was chill? Good. Good. A chill chill stream is always good. That's that's our weekend streams when I game. Although sometimes not chill. And this weekend's game stream is definitely not going to be chill. There's, in Estonia, there's a saying, a good child has lots of names. Well, there you go. I was once called Juche Gang, but I'm trying to pivot that to more just being the name of the community. I'm not Juche Gang. We're Juche Gang. You know? Every, that's, that's the way we like to... I like to think of it. Even though my channel, I do have the YouTube channel called that. How about we watch some more, you comrades want to watch some more of my video, the Juche Gang video on um, Kim Jong-il's life. We watched the very first part of it. There's another part we have here. Why don't we check that out? And it's not going to be weird because it wasn't me narrating this episode. So it's less weird for me, psychologically. <laughs> it's less weird for me psychologically. Oh yeah, and if you're new here, I encourage you to hit that follow button. I'm a communist that fights for the liberation of all people. I'm against discrimination of all forms and for land back strictly. The decision on the implementation of the 10 long-term objectives for the construction of socialism and also raise the question of who would succeed the leader. The plenary meeting elected Kim Jong-il to the political committee of the central committee of the party, thus acclaiming him as successor to the revolution. The acclamation as successor to the revolution was regarded as necessary 
to solidify the continuity of the cause of Juche socialism and communism. A great deal of history has proven that regarding the continuity of leadership as an unimportant issue has hindered the world communist movement. Take the example of the political turmoil after the death of J.B. Stalin and the coup led by Khrushchev, who in turn was a revisionist and a traitor. In my personal opinion, regarding the question of who would succeed the revolution sooner rather than later is a vitally urgent task in the building of socialism in order to make sure that the right comrade has been chosen who will carry forward the red flag and never pull it down. And that's, and by the way, this is this whole, the, the successor to the revolution part is what is distorted by imperialists to try and paint it as like some predetermined thing because Kim Jong-il was the son of Kim Il-sung. But no, what picking the successor means is that the party needs to tr- choose who should be a leader in the event that the current leader is killed, dies suddenly, is uh, recalled from the position or any other such thing, right? You need to have uh, you need to have plans in order to replace that leadership. And it was like like with the case of Lenin and Stalin, you know, a lot of people Lenin and Stalin had worked so closely together. There was never a chance Trotsky was going to get elected to anything, right? Le- like people saw Lenin and Stalin as always working together by the point that Lenin was passing away, and there was little doubt that Stalin had the popularity to become the next party leader, like. It was pretty much solidified even before Lenin passed. Whereas with Stalin, as we all know, after his death, there is like this kind of strange struggle that goes on. And part of them, as we see with with uh, that work I just linked by Yezov, by the way. I know I'm I paused it for a while here, but this work that I, that I that I linked with Yezov talks about a fifth column that possibly Khrushchev was a part of. Yugoslavia and Albania totally screwed up by not choosing future leader. Both leaders were 80 plus years old. It's pretty much snap election. And that's the thing, right? That's that moment is what allows like revisionists or renegades or even people who are working with imperialists directly to worm their way into the leadership positions. When the, when the party is still strong and united behind the masses, or when the masses are strongly united behind the party, that's when you need to be able to ensure that, okay, who do the masses want to succeed the leadership, right? Because the most important thing for a leader in a socialist party that, or in a socialist state where the workers' party is power is that that lead, leader is like a, a core, is like an inspiring representative of the people's struggle. That is the key factor. Kim Jong-il also conducted a review of the former theories of the working class, utopian socialism, Marxism, Marxism-Leninism, and so on. He wrote a great deal on clarifying the new philosophical principles which had been discovered in the struggle for socialism. He helped to systemise the Jutji idea into a complete set of revolutionary ideals. After hard work of clarifying and studying the philosophical principles of the working class theories and the theories of Kim Il-sung, the February Declaration was made. This, in effect, was the programme for moulding the entirety of Korean society on the basis of the Juche idea and for the building of a Juche communist society. In the first half of 1975, Kim Il-sung spent a great amount of time away from Korea on trips to foreign countries. Kim yeah. Jong-il was left to oversee the development of the six-year plan. He paid specific attention to the rural economy and spent a lot of time outside of Pyongyang inspecting farms and mines. It was also around this time that the building of Pyongyang was accelerated A great number of apartment complexes, leisure and retail sites, as well as revolutionary sites, began construction in the mid-70s and were scheduled to be finished in time for the 70th birthday of Kim Il-sung. Kim Jong-il 
was deeply involved in the construction of new streets and buildings in the city and received reports every day as to the progress of their development. He frequented the construction sites and helped the officials in solving problems which had cropped up. The construction of rural communities, towns and cities was also conducted in the 70s. It was seen to it by Kim Jong-il that these places were constructed in accordance with the principles of providing the people with wholesome and pleasant living conditions suitable for the modern times and lifestyle. Also, the further development of the ideology of the Korean People's Army was carried out. Kim Jong-il was heavily involved in the development of the revolutionary ideals of the KPA and worked to ensure that the relations between the working class, the working class party and the working class army were elucidated and clarified for the troops so that they would carry forward the red flag of revolution in their duties in defending the fatherland and the imperialist aggressors. Juche gang symbols if you got them. Rock those gang signs. The transformation of the whole of society in accordance with the Juche idea, as well as the implementation of the three revolutions, ideological, cultural, and technological, had been implemented to the satisfaction of the Workers' Party, and in 1979, the 18th plenary meeting of the 5th Central Committee saw to it to convene Love the 6th that. Party Congress for the following year. Kim Jong-il threw himself into the preparations for the upcoming Congress and saw to it that not only would it be an important meeting for the socio-political review and development of the party, but also the Congress would be a celebration of the long history of the Korean Revolution. The entire country was mobilized to carry out the 100-day campaign in order to increase economic output in time for the 6th Congress. In October 1980, the 6th Party Congress opened and was, and was attended by delegates from the Workers' Party of Korea, as well as party and state officials from more than 100 other countries. During the Congress, Kim Jong-il was elected to the position of member of the Politburo of the Presidium and member of the Central Military Commission of the Workers' Party of Korea, as well as being re-elected to the posts he already held. The Congress reviewed the period of time since the 5th Congress and strengthened the party's position as a Juche-based party, which would allow them to fulfill from generation to generation the revolutionary cause of socialism communism. Kim Jong-il's theoretical development of the Juche idea, the magnum opus, so to speak, of his works, 
on the Juche idea was published in 1982. Highly recommended. The tower of the Juche idea, as well as the Ark Don't of Triumph, about my theory was arrested list. under the supervision of Kim Jong Il. The Juche Tower, which was to stand opposite Kim Il Sung Square across the Taidong River, was the symbolic representation of the great Juche idea, which had been developed by Kim Il Sung and clarified and elevated to a new level by Kim Jong Il. The construction was completed in time for the 70th birthday of Kim Il Sung. The Speed of the 80s campaign was spearheaded by Kim Jong-il. The campaign was to bring about a new era of economic construction as put forward by the 6th Congress in order to hasten the progress of socialism. The campaign concerned itself with the large economic complexes such as iron and steel plants right down to the minute, small-scale enterprises, home production teams and so on were all involved in the effort to increase economic production. Kim Jong-il conducted many inspections of economic enterprises at this time and did a lot of work in order to help bridge the gaps between the highest organs of state and party power and the enterprises. In 1984, Kim Jong-il organised and inspected the Pyongyang Festival of Consumer Goods. In 1988, he led the 200-day campaign after the completion of the first year of the third seven-year plan. The 80s also saw a new era of the building of homes in Pyongyang and other cities and towns. Kim Jong-il, once again, was heavily involved in the process of their construction having a good understanding of the blueprints of the designs and receiving frequent updates on the projects. In 1989, Kim Jong-il and the Workers' Party of Korea set the goal of building 50,000 new modern homes for the people by the time of the 80th birthday of Kim Il-sung. In 1989, the Berlin Wall came down. Eastern European states began to dismantle socialism and two years later the USSR was dissolved as a result of the union between the revisionists and imperialists which led to the renegades of socialism to hold down the red flag of socialism. There are many reasons for the end of Soviet socialism and a number of these reasons were made clear thanks to the principles of the Juche idea. Although it is not the aim of this mini-series to discuss the disaster of 1991, it is important to say that Kim Jong-il wrote extensively on the reasons for the USSR's collapse. One major issue elucidated by him was the revisionists' divorce of the party and the people. 
The party could not provide effective leadership to the people, and the people could not discharge efficiently their duties as masters of society. Thanks to these abuses of socialism began to grow, and corruption became the mainstay. This combination of the people not being able to discharge their duties, as well as a general distrust for the revisionist party, allowed the imperialists to seep into the Soviet Union and dupe them into believing in the superiority of capitalism. Thus, the USSR was no more, and the world imperialist camp was waiting for the DPRK to follow the same course and disappear. The collapse of the USSR was a difficult time for the DPRK and is a significantly unpleasant period for the working people of Korea. I got a fire quote. The revolution that feeds the children gets my support. Exactly, Meg. Last part. Here we go. We're gonna watch the last part right now. Fuck it, why not? The end of the Soviet Union was a catastrophe for the international communist movement. The enemies and renegades of socialism, imperialists and reactionaries were waiting with bated breath for the DPRK, as well as Cuba for that matter, to follow the same course and disappear. It's well known that the DPRK lost around 70% of its trade overnight, beginning the infamous era in Korea's history known as the arduous march. The reformists and renegades of socialism Ooh, who introduced guy. the multi-party system and left the working class party in tatters provided a vital lesson to the workers party of Korea of the necessity of tightening the party's strength. Kim Jong-il put in a lot of work around this time at developing and elucidating the strength of the party leadership. In general he summed up that building up the role of the party leadership is decisive in developing the motive force of the revolution. The masses and the party must be bound tightly together. If the party's leadership is damaged, then it will lose its position and Oh, collapse. thank you very much, GMO. 
If you would like more information about the Juche Juche viewpoint of the Communist Party, this one's for you too. Please comment below. Of course, whenever 420 comes up, I encourage all comrades who are able and want to difficulties brought on by the collapse of the socialist bloc. <laughs> Fulfilling the objectives of the Sixth Party Congress would prove to be a challenge. At the 21st plenary meeting of the Sixth Party Central Committee, Kim Il Sung recognized a certain necessity of a period of adjustment. The agriculture first, light industry first, trade first policy was adopted in order to wade the tides of the economic downturn. Kim Jong il threw himself into the task of implementing these policies and assuring that all of the party officials were well endowed with the new revolutionary strategy. During the 1990s, Kim Jong-il also published a number of treaties and essays regarding the collapse of socialism and how the WPK had managed to maintain its position despite unfavourable economic issues. These works included, but are not limited to, Socialism as a Science, Fundamentals of Revolutionary Party Building, Abuses of Socialism are Intolerable, and so on. In July 1994, Kim Il-sung died. Kim Jong-il not only grieved at the loss of his own father and the immortal leader of the nation, but as well as having to face the prospect of leading Korea without him. Kim Jong-il went about preparing for the funeral of the great leader. He visited many well, times thanks Mansu for admitting Hill, it finally, where Kim Il-sung's bronze statue is located. He oversaw the, the creation time of the now official now, portrait come this of the way president. to the gulag please kim jong il also oversaw the building of the kum suzan palace of the sun the immortal temple of juche legs this as way, the final grandpa. resting place of kim il sung furthermore he emphasized greatly the need to carry forward the eternal president's ideals as a revolutionary and communist thinker in 1997 the central committee and the Central Military Commission of the Workers' gotta Party have the ever, ever chose green Kim Jong-il to become the new General Secretary. Here. In 1998, the Supreme People's Assembly elected him to the position of Chairman of the National Defence Commission. After Kim Il-sung's death, it was general, generally believed that Kim Jong-il would be elected President of the Republic. However, with the introduction of the Kim Il-sung Constitution in 1998, the position was formally abolished, awarding Kim Il-sung the ceremonial title of Eternal President. During the arduous march, the new General Secretary put himself at the forefront of the struggle for defending the Republic from the imperialists and waging the struggle in the face of economic blockade and natural disasters. Kim Jong-il spent many hours on his personal train travelling all over the country. He, like he and his father always had done, visited farms, factories and mines, listening to the grievances of the local workers as well as providing on-the-spot instruction. In a speech titled, Officials Must Live in the Spirit of the Arduous March, he called for the need of the officials to showcase revolutionary optimism in the grueling times. On a side note, Kim Jong-il led by example. He emphasised the need in many of his works to develop the driving force of the revolution, 
a core tenant of the Duce idea. The arduous march was a time of severe economic difficulty for the DPRK. However, his actions have proved the validity of the Duce idea. Ensuring the motive force of the revolution was as strong as ever, the Korean communists were able to reject the false promises of the imperialists of a bourgeois capitalist society. The people, despite the grim outlook, showed steely-faced determination to keep the red flag flying in people's career. Let us learn from Kim Jong-il's good example. In the early 2000s, Kim Jong-il spent a great deal of time developing Korea's relationship with Russia, China and a number of other countries. In 2001, he paid a visit to Moscow where he laid a wreath at Lenin's mausoleum and paid profound respect to him as well as the Soviets who fought gallantly for the liberation of Korea and the working people of the world. Kim Jong-il explained in depth the necessity to fight fire with fire in the showdown with the imperialists. During the six-party talks between North and South Korea, Russia, China, Japan and the US, the US and the Bush's administration took the approach of not listening to a word of the Koreans' demands until ben they familiar? completely dismantled their nuclear weapons <coughs> program. Kim Jong-il time and time again stressed the importance of standing up to the American bullies. The Americans were eventually forced to sit up and take proper notice of the DPRK and listen to their demands. The US DPRK conference in Berlin in 2007 took place. The DPRK presented the US with a list of demands, including scrubbing the DPRK from the list of state sponsors of terrorism as well as unfreezing their foreign assets. God. In 2008, a number of these demands were met. The Bush administration's hardline tactics had failed, and in the end, they had to go to the DPRK on bended knee and attempt a policy of dialogue. By the end of 2008, the US delivered 160,000 tonnes of grain, 200,000 tonnes of oil, and enforce the obligation of economic compensation by other foreign countries to deliver 500,000 tonnes of oil, amounting to around $300 million. Under Kim Jong-il's leadership, the DPRK took a hardline approach to the hardliner USA. Kim Jong-il knew that the imperialists only knew one language and that a tough approach was necessary in securing peace. Under Kim Jong-il's leadership, Korea sent a clear message to the imperialists that destroying the DPR of Korea would not be an easy task and that they would have no choice but to listen to him. Kim Jong-il unfortunately died in 2011 while on his way to perform field guidance. Kim Jong-il died doing his most humblest of actions, serving the people. He was, in my opinion, a shining example of the true communist spirit. He was a fierce military commander, diplomat, theoretician and practical party leader. He displayed a deep calmness and profound understanding of the philosophical and practical problems which lay ahead. From his early days to his very last, he proved himself to be a noble man with abundant virtue. We must never forget Kim Jong-il. He was, in my opinion, the greatest communist of the 20th century. Many came before him, and many will come after. However, his lifetime of work will go down in the history books of the progressive people in the world as the most determined, humble, and logical leader of the Korean, no, the world proletariat. To finish, I would like to quote a passage from my favourite work of his, Socialism is a Science. Quote, In order to sincerely serve the people, one must first think of the people before oneself and regard the pleasure and pain of the people as one's own. Local service to the people is a communist's sacred duty. Herein lies the value of communists' life. 
A man who works for the revolution enters the working class party not for his self-interest, fame or authority, but to serve the people more faithfully. Those who undergo hardship before anybody else and put it before pleasure, and who take charge of difficult tasks on their own while giving credit for success to others, they are the true communists and members of the working class party. Here's their brief biography on Kim Jong-il's life. You got a commie quote here? Let me grab you a good one. Oh, I like, I got a good one. And we get the whole timeline now. Yeah, he did die pretty young. I mean, he was on the move all the time. Even like for being the leader of a country during the Arduous March, all he ate was uh, small bowls of white rice. He didn't leave the most, he didn't live, live like the most easy life as some people like to try and portray. Yeah, 90s were stressful and I mean even his upbringing right he grew up in a gra in like a pretty small hut during war against the US Do I think who was poisoned? Kim Jong-il? No, I think he just, he worked hard his whole life. He'd like never stopped taking trains all over the country. He just, just worked himself hard as shit, I think, honestly. Yeah, definitely don't think he was poisoned. I think he just worked hard as fuck, to be honest. Art of the Violence, but Korea is a monarchy. And anyways, we should look up actual socialists like Denmark and Sweden. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, or Canada here, where we're continuing genocide against First Nations people and have a literal king. Yeah, he looked far older in the 60s than his father in the 70s. And it, I think it was because, again, he worked super hard. They went through a hard time in the 90s especially with the overthrow of USSR, loss of their trading partner, having to, I mean, thankfully, even early on, they knew not to, they knew to always develop heavy industry because one thing that uh, USSR wanted to do and one like famous disagreement that they had with USSR was the USSR wanted them to focus on light industry and have USSR focus on heavy industry. And DPRK said, no, no, we're, we're not going for that because if something ever happens to you, then we're left without heavy industry of any kind. So thankfully, they, did ha they were already developing independent economy even before that, thankfully. Here's a, here's a quote for you. Formation of a common revolutionary front is impossible unless the proletariat of oppressor nations render direct and determined support to the liberation movement of the oppressed peoples against the imperialism of its quote-unquote own country. For no nation can be free if it oppresses other nations. Engels. 
This support implies the upholding, defense, and implementation of the slogan of the right of nations to succession, to independent existence as states. Unless this slogan is implemented, the union and collaboration of nations within a single world economic system, which is the material basis for the victory of world socialism, cannot be brought about. Stalin. Oh shit! <laughs> That's just for all those people who think mechanically about that term, socialism in one country. As you can see, he was a little bit more complicated than socialism in one country. He understood the process that building socialism in one country was exactly contributing to world revolution in all countries. By the way, if you haven't tweeted this hashtag, search the landfill today, I ask you to do so. You don't have to share any type of particular post, or you can share this post here, but I ask that you quote tweet it and say search the landfill, just, just like that. You can even paste it, I put it there in chat for you. You can paste it, just put the hashtag beforehand. You know, they're, we're trying to convince uh, the state to search for a murdered and missing indigenous women. This was a rally held at the city where we painted this, the, they painted the red dress, which is the symbol for murder, missing indigenous women, who, you know, countless times in Canada, the state refers, refuses to search for, even though the police themselves suspect that the bodies are in this landfill. Look at this shit. What do you all think of this? This is a little bit, uh, what the fuck? Look at this. Like she crazy? Ten year old child was disrespecting his mother, so she called a veteran. You won't clean your room? You won't do what you want to do? And you talk to your mother like that? Like you tough? Do you think you tough, little man? Talk to me like you talk to your mother. Talk to me. You think you tough, don't you? Boss up on me. Cuss me out. Tell me you ain't gonna do what I say, do. I dare you. What the hell? I dare you. You ain't gonna do it to me? Why you do it to her? Why you talk to her disrespectfully? What do you think, Chad? Does this help in anything? Why? Little boy cancel me. Strange man coming over? Disrespectfully. Strange man come over, <laughs> yell at, yell in your kid's face? That that, that seems like a good parenting, does it? Yeah. Let's traumatize the kid instead of uh, raising them and teaching them, right? Okay, here's my position, right? Children are their own autonomous beings, and you have to treat them as such. They are independent humans. They are just as independent as you. You can teach them, and you can do everything you need to do as a parent without teaching, without treating them as objects or, or like subjects of your politics or whatever. Not your politics, but your personal, I guess your own personal ego. And then I just was looking at the comments on this. Yeah, you, you can just explain stuff. Just talk to kids like they're people. It's, that's, it really is that simple. Believe it or not. As a father, I can tell you that it's not as hard as some... Like, look. Look at the way the people are cheering this on. These people are like... It's okay to have a little, little discipline. Little man isn't tough no more. Like, what? These people don't want a parent. They want to abuse people. Look, at least this person gets it. Esha, of course. Never question a man's role in this world. Like, who is this pick me now? Good lord. The, what the hell? These people are... And you see what kind of profiles are commenting in favor of this, right? Just keep noting. Notice these profiles that are like, oh, this is great. This is hilarious. This is awesome. Look, Army veteran, you know, he beats his family. Sorry to say, but Army veteran, and he's cheering about this. This is how I used to talk to my little brother when he disrespected my mom, like... All kids need a dad. This, if this is your idea of being a dad, you're a terrible dad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In my opinion, if you think this is being a dad, this is your terrible dad. 2,000 people like this. Dads matter.
What the fuck? This one. I told my daughters they would not talk back to their mom when I was around. I was only responsible for them 18 years, but I was going to be with their mom long after we're alive. Both daughters passed this on to their kids. A time-honored recipe for success. Shut the fuck up, you fucking goddamn child abusers. What the hell is wrong with these people? Okay, that's enough of that before I fly off the handle here. Ooh, good thing I don't have the webcam, maybe. By the way, if you support my work, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we might get a webcam this week, this month. Only a few days left. Check this out. This is where, this is close to my house. I found this on Google Maps when I was taking the kid to a birthday party. <laughs> the fried rat stand. Now, considering the community it was in, it didn't surprise me at all, and I considered stopping by for some rat, if I'm being honest with you all. Generational trauma is tough, man. Speaking from someone whose family was uh, victims of the residential school system as well as, well, our, our community being destroyed. That, that sound is for all settlers. <laughs> Look at this. You want to see something fucked up? Look at this. Look at Jordan Peterson. He sees Greta Thunberg, climate action now, and then I hope that's recycled cardboard. What the hell is that? Who spaces their tweets like that? Dude is just, dude is like literally one bad away, bad date away from going Ted Zelensky on people. I swear to fuck. You can tell by like who, that's, that is serial killer shit, right? You wonder if who, if, if what, Jordan Peterson's back? He's but. Oh, I th oh yeah, he's back. He's the, well. This was August fourth. He tweeted this. Yeah, he's all his benzo. Yeah, he's good with the benzos now, probably. Right? I'm not. We don't know if he's over the addiction, but he's definitely done the treatment. He's done having treatment at least. That much we know. Tell me this isn't like serial killer spacing. Do, does anybody else face their tweets like this? Do you type two words and then feel the need to press enter? Like, wait, enter would he even tweet, wouldn't it? What is he doing? Don't go near Jordan Peterson. I think that's her warning right there. By the way, if you missed last uh, week, yeah, he's doing a haiku or something. He's being aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, dude, I tried to do that as a joke. Yeah, it just feels like you're going to murder somebody. I don't know. Like, like, this is not... I don't see anybody else tweeting like that. Like, what is he get? I hope that's recycled cardboard, right? Oh, our follower count is growing, by the way. By the way, I, I don't I don't call out call out just followers unless people um, start talking in chat just because, you know, I, as an autistic myself, I don't like being called out necessarily unless I'm actually chatting. So I just kind of extend that same thought process to my community. Hope that doesn't make me seem too weird. <laughs> I know it probably does. Old Jordan Peterson. 
Yeah, I think Jordan Peterson should go back on that, that diet, right? That'll set him straight. Cut a few years off, maybe, at the, at the very least. I'm the same way as you, crazy shy, so thank you, yeah. Yeah, that's what I figure, right? A lot of people might be just lurking. They'll hit the follow button. They don't necessarily want to be like, oh, yeah, hey, thanks you for following. That's why I don't do the, I don't do like the, uh, the alert or the shout out for a follow, just simply because I don't want to put anyone on the spot. Very conscious of it myself. So I'm going to do, we're going to do like some kind of poll in our Discord, and we're going to figure out what we're going to watch. You comrades probably saw that we had, um, let me find that. You were, how many comrades here right now were with me for this? Were any of you watching this? We watched a bunch. Yeah, here's one of his actual works. There we go. We have a bunch of stuff by this director who like specializes in claymation. We watched Darkness, Light, Darkness. We watched uh, another one here too as well. Which one was the other one? We watched The Death of Stalinism in Bohemia. Yeah, we have to watch some more of these. And the v virile games, which was like a very weird, like stop. I mean, all, all this work is stop motion. Vegan, you've seen Alice. Welcome, by the way, comrade. Yeah, he's there's some interesting stuff. Yeah, it's really great, like stop motion stuff. Like, like let's see. That one's dimensions of dialogue, and then. Food. Food is 16 minutes. The last trick we watched. All right, I got time for one more thing. So let's check out. Let's check out dimensions of dialogue. I remember this one being interesting. Check this out. This is a stop motion. We'll we'll watch more of these too, eventually. Get a whole bunch. He was like making these, some of these during the Soviet era. They try and make like anti-communist propaganda tries to make it out like it was suppressed or like his work was suppressed or something, but it was suppressed in the West because the West didn't distribute Soviet films. His take on Alice in Wonderland was cool. How long is that one vegan? Is that his feature film? To go probably yeah we might have to watch that one sometime as you know we watch movies every monday today we watched that bprk movie comrade king goes flying it was so good I find the stop motion is incredible though, like, oh, <laughs> like the fluidity of the, of the stop motion animation itself. DMO, you've seen some of Alice? That might be a good one for the stream. This stuff, it all gets, pro all the, I love this one the best, look. The paper's breaking up these, like, hard objects.
<laughs> I think the full film was on YouTube, but I didn't finish it, so I'd be interested in it. Cool. Cool, we'll add that one to the list. I know Comrade Red also suggested a few films from Vietnam that he knows about that we can check out as well. Some will be good and some might not be as good, but it's all fun. That's that's why watching it on stream is better. You know? In the shavings. So fascinating looking. theories in chat now. What's the story here? What the heck's going on? You're chewing up the words of the other person and spitting it out in a deformed way? Storyline here. What do you think? Interpretations. You get into the clay later on. Yes. I see some sort of evolution going on. Yeah, the stop motion is unbelievable. Oh, and now the communication is spreading people further and further. Here you go. Dialogue. Oh, this is still part of it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Julian, books have stuff recorded down all over the years from people. And if we could find a book with someone that had similar problems, just take what they wrote down on the book and make it. Ah, what the fuck? Sorry, Julian. Take what they wrote down and make it hers. Oh, thank you very much, NTC. Perfect. Yeah, he started using clay later on. He did mostly, like, solid objects before clay. The clay work, though, is amazing. I mean, even the stop motion again, I've tried to do like if anybody has ever tried to do stop motion just on your own, you know how hard it is to make it look any anything resembling smooth without it like going in extreme slow motion or something. That's a piece of miscommunication. You've tried some GMO? It's not easy. Like, look at that. Oh yeah, high school you did a bunch. Were you in the um, audiovisual? Classes or whatever you call it.
Did a project in middle school, yeah. I, I've done it just at home, like trying to do it at, for fun with the kids, like dinky cars and stuff, but it is very, very time consuming. And again, mine's all choppy. It looks nothing, nothing as smooth as this. Design and tech class, that's what you talk. We'll have to look what year this one was made, because this one uses quite a bit of clay, which I know Jan started doing later on with more clay. His earlier stuff is a lot of like solid objects. Hit access to an eight millimeter tape and tape video editor too. Damn. Makes me regret not taking audio visual or whatever you call it. One of those types of classes that would have been nice. Okay, this is all just a metaphor for a or some sort of story about communication. Okay, that's not so nice. The miscommunications have begun. <laughs> he, he buttered the shoe. Whatever the fuck that it is. Looks a little white and creamy to be butter. Grinding up the knife, too. Oh, and laced up the bread. Their faces. Pay attention to their faces. It does look like textured like butter, I guess. This looks so goddamn white, it might be margarine. Red fight. Oh, damn. <laughs> the. This communication is exhausting. It all. There we go. Yeah. That that was that. What do you think of that? We got lots more yawn to watch on this this channel. Here we go. There's, I would say this, this applies to all countries fighting against imperialism. All right, well, I think that was, that was pretty successful. Wouldn't, wouldn't you all agree? We watched Comrade Kim Goes Flying. If you missed that movie, I recommend you go back and watch the VOD because it was great. Um, don't forget about my socials. I always stress. You know, it's not just the regular socials there, you comrades. I have a library here that I maintain of articles and videos. Whether it's for DPRK on this DPRK Korea page on Facebook or this Comrade Stalin page. And they're public, so I don't even think you need an account to see them. And I've got like a library of videos, ones that we will watch on this channel, but 
you know, you can find a lot of videos here as well that have been maybe even taken down from YouTube, a lot of them. Be sure to check that out. And then as well as, as I've mentioned earlier, follow Iskra Books. We have our next journal coming soon. I'm trying to get my next Juche lessons in that. We have some great books here available. All of them have free PDFs. And if you want to find my Juche lessons in writing, you can do it here at like our Peace Land and Bread journals. Bring up the free PDF, for example. All kinds of great works in these little journals here. And you can find my Juche lessons back here. If you're interested in that, check it out. If you do uh, enjoy and support my work, I encourage you to well, support my work. <laughs> Any little bit is an extreme help right now. We've had a lot of flooding recently. And it's raining again. It's uh, going to be raining again very soon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave with this quote here before we raid into a different channel. Oh yeah, and I want to remind everybody that tomorrow we are going to be doing Tuesday theory reading. Every Tuesday and Thursday we read theory on this channel. Right now we're working our way through Red Skin, White Masks. Rejecting the Colonial Politics of Recognition by Glenn Sean Couthard. Been a fantastic read so, so far. What the heck was I saying there? And we are on chapter three right now. So we got like, how many streams to go? So this will be tomorrow, Thursday, and then two more after that. So we got four streams left of this. And then we'll be on to a Kim Jong-il work. And then I did promise the translator of Lucerto Stalin that I would read that on stream as well. So that has to be upcoming. So there's our next two reads you can look forward to. Movie Monday, I'm thinking Ukraine on Fire is probably going to be our watch for next Monday. And if you join me on the weekend, because chat managed to contribute 100,000 labor vouchers over the last month, that's a hell of a lot of labor vouchers. Congratulations, comrades. You contributed 100,000 labor vouchers within 30 days, and now I have to play Getting Over It, which is a painful game where you're a man in a cauldron with a hammer, and you have to try and make it up a mountain. Any wrong move can send you back hours of progress. And if I'm able to activate the crowd control for it, I will, and you'll be able to come in and further spend your bits or your channel points, aka labor vouchers, and cause me even more direct pain while I suffer through that this weekend. You won't want to miss that. That's this Sunday, Sunday. All right, I'm going to leave you with this quote, and then we're going to raid our good comrade, I, Dan Simpson, by the looks of it. The revolutionary struggle of the popular masses against imperialism and dominationism, which trample upon independence, and for the victory of the cause of socialism and communism is steadily being strengthened and developed. Nothing can stem the current of historical development, which demands independence and advances on the road of independence. Not only today, but also the future, belong entirely to the people who are struggling for independence. Comrade Kim Jong-il, a little bit of revolutionary optimism leave you off with there everyone let's raid into i dan simpson don't go anywhere juche gang members get ready with your juche gang emote you know we always like to flood comrade i dan simpson's chat with the juche gang emotes when we raid in there so if you got them raid do it if you don't have them, you might have the channel points to get them before we go. Right? I think one of, yeah, 220 labor vouchers, you can choose an emote to unlock. So if you, if you have 220 labor vouchers, even if you're not subscribed to me, you can get that Juche Gang um, emote, and then you can spam I Damn Simpson when we get in there. He loves knowing that it's the Juche Gang rating, I promise. 
And again, if you missed Comrade Kim Goes Flying, this movie, please go back and watch it. It was it was amazing. We loved it. It was such a great breath of fresh air, revolutionary optimism, talking about how the working class can do anything. It's the difference between a socialist movie and a garbage capitalist movie. And I loved it. Thank you all so much, comrades, for joining me today. Very much appreciate you all. I hope you come join me tomorrow for a theory read. You join me for the movie? Now please join me tomorrow for a read. Love you, comrades. Bye. Thank you. Score Larry. Perfect timing. Thank you for the raid. Thank you so much for raiding Leaping Larry. Love your face, Comrade Larry. Hope you're having a nice day, homie. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. What are we all up to today? We've been talking mostly about the, uh, the Alabama Riverboat Brawl. Watching every single... Uh, second of available video from every angle uh, we have the best analysis on the on the event let us know if you have any questions hope you had a great stream again we've also been learning you know talk about the news we did the headlines um the Raiders need to see it again oh my god I can't I can't like again I no I'm not doing it